<laughs> All right, guys. All right. All right. Are we poor? We poor. All right. Welcome to Hog Step number twenty nine, eight, nine, twenty something. Woo! Woo! Uh, today we have all around badass, all American, no Hammond in the house. What's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Morgan? What's up, Canoe? It's, it's all number, good. Number 29. We've done 29 of 29. these podcasts. It's all good. Baby, wow. baby. <laughs> okay. Hogshle <laughs> uh, podcast, for those of you who are tuning in the first time, is a podcast where we are inviting friends and inspiring people, people, people that are living outside of the box, uh, creating a lifestyle, a passionate lifestyle. Uh, uh, a great life of their own and not necessarily following the the herd of people uh, living not so exciting life and you are definitely one of those guys and welcome thanks for having me <laughs> Just eating, eating up your salad uh, meanwhile no, I can I'm so close to done that's all right that's all right <laughs> uh, uh, meanwhile I can uh, tell for guys who don't already know that you have been spo- speaking at the summit we did last weekend and you got some amazing feedback. You did a great speech, and also a lot of guys came up to you afterwards. And you got some, some, some high demand on some clo- coaching clients and stuff this week, right? Yeah, it's been a fun week, man. It's been yeah. really cool. You haven't been to Norway before. No, nope. first time in Norway. First time in in Europe, actually. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's a trip because it's it's. It's kind of like America, but twice as expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Well, uh, America was like the top of the food chain on, on currency. This is not the case. Oh, not the case at all. No, 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 no. No, I'm just an uneducated American who thinks like that because America's <laughs> the best at everything, right? I'll let you finish your salad and then we can do some announcements. Meanwhile, cool. like... Uh, if you go, if you see this on Facebook, uh, you can go into Ustream and uh, scroll down, and there now has become a Facebook comment bar down there. So if you want to share this with your friends, uh, either click like or write a comment below there, and we are we we're very thankful if you do that. <laughs> and you can go into uh, Facebook.com/slash/hagerschlepp and like the Facebook page. Uh, do we have any other like call for there's, actions? There's, there's, uh, do that. Go, go to facebook.com slash hawkeslap. It's uh, the URL just below our beautiful faces. And uh, also there's going to be a chat. So if you're just to your right, there should be a chat where you can type in questions or just general comments or talk with people. Yep. And hang out with us. Yep. If you have any questions, write it in the comments. And Mr. Technician, Knut Johansson. Wizard. Will the God. wizard, God, all around Norwegian, will uh, will uh, will read the questions up if they're if they're any valuable though, <laughs> and then we'll read it up for you and answer them as good as possible. We encourage you to tune in. Interactivitet. We already got a, we already got a, got some input here. Really, uh, Lauren. Lauren really wants a piece of your. Salad, your salad. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about Sorry, that. Sorry, Lauren. We gotta at least have some conversation first. We gotta <laughs> get to know each other. You know, what a piece find similar of interests. Salad. I like yoga. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. You did some yoga today. I right? did do some yoga. I did some hot yoga today. Um, hot Bikram yoga. For those of you who don't know, Bikram is this like militant type of yoga where you do the same exact routine every time and there's a person standing in front of the class kind of like yelling at you it's like really it's like military meets yoga it's like really? go back like further back further back and you're just like oh, i'm as far back as i can go <laughs> <laughs> you know um but it's good like I, I definitely feel it well in my body and i sweat like a pound of water off because it's like 40 degrees there yeah yeah they for for those of you tuning in from America, that's like 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So, yeah, it's a hot room. Wow. Tons of sweating going on. It's good stuff. But I needed that salad or I would have been probably dead soon. Yeah. <laughs> You've been working all day to get, trying to get a ticket back to America. Yes, that was uh, complicated. <laughs> but uh, Morning Canute helped me out. 
Visa, if you are, if if any Visa representatives are watching right now, you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> you guys suck. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just really hard to book a, a flight home, and I've yeah. been in Norway now for what, about two weeks. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm itching for some California sunshine. So you can imagine. But thank you it's guys cold for here, helping right? me with that. Yeah, sure, no problem. It's getting really, really cold. Really, really cold here now. Yeah, like in a couple of weeks. Uh, yep. Uh, just starting. Listen, you need to you need to talk into this. Talk talk into this more. See, that's a microphone. This is a. This yeah, is, so what is this? It picks up <laughs> your voice. Yes. And Hello. It. Hello, it's, Lauren. It's power. Can for, you hear my for, sound? Uh, for the guys who haven't been to the summit uh, and uh, my Norwegian, uh, our Norwegian followers and stuff, uh, who, who the fuck are Noah? <laughs> who is Noah? Yeah. Oh, it's a deep question. I'm a, a lifestyle coach. I'm specifically no, now a lifestyle coach for men. I teach men how to unlock their confidence, how to live their absolute best life and not just some meaningless thing. Yep. You know yeah. how to how to really live, how to live your passion, how to create your own online business, how to have enough confidence to r- truly go for exactly what you want mm. in this life and nothing less. And I've been self developing now really consciously for about seven years. And so what I try to do and what I've been successful at doing is taking people through my seven year journey in a matter of months yep you know by really just structuring it and putting it out there in a way that is is actionable digestible and um really skyrockets guys success in life Mm. so it's been a really cool just kind of like um because this past year i know you saw how i had like all my noah hammond videos out there so if you haven't seen it yet youtube.com slash noah hammond i got like 130 free advice videos out there on everything from relationships to dating to to confidence to self-development to health and uh i was kind of lost this year you know and i didn't really know exactly what i was supposed to do because i I didn't think it was to coach men and to help them be awesome but thanks to like you know this trip has been awesome guys for me because like it just became so clear that this is my purpose you know to to coach these guys like getting, I got the opportunity to speak at the summit and speak in front of like 150 men about, you know, becoming your best self. And I just got such awesome feedback and I've just been coaching people nonstop all week long. And just by being surrounded by people and, and seeing the shifts that they're having like immediately, mm. you know, like the guy I was coaching today for a half day by 45 minutes into it, he's like, I've already gotten so much value from this. <laughs> nice. You know, like he was just like, Singing the praises. Yeah. And it just, yeah. Um, you know, being an internet marketer primarily and yeah. now just stepping into what you guys do so well, which yeah. is like real live coaching. Mm. Uh, it's been like I never really knew that yeah. people were getting this impacted because it doesn't come through to me in an email. It's different seeing them real life, right? The transformation. Yeah. And also the like the, the epiphanies when something shifts. You see like it. This, yep, you can see it. It's this. like the wheels start cranking yeah. in some new way. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, like, yeah. Sometimes, like, sometimes people have gone through life completely missing out, you know, completely missing out for mm. no reason at all. Yeah. Like, for no reason at all, just because they thought they have to. Like, just because, maybe, maybe because everyone else did, or maybe because they... They had some limiting beliefs of their own, like, I can't for some reason, I'm different in a bad way for some mm-hmm. reason. And then and then just the, the snap, like the, the, the new connection in their head when they realize that, oh, it is possible, I can do it, and this is the step, or this is the new mindset. And then just uh, implementing that mindset in like, a, like that sometimes. Sometimes that happens and it's so valuable, it's so life-changing for them. Yeah, like the guy I was working with um, today, I, I basically helped him see how half of his life was bullshit. Yeah. Like half of the reality that he had constructed was was false mm-hmm. and, and half of it was very real. I mean, basically he was living inside of a false happiness okay. in certain ways. Like in certain ways it was a very real happiness and in other ways it was a falsely constructed happiness mm. that was created out of the necessity 
for um, you know basically a defense mechanism because he had been the kind of kid who got made fun of a lot and got bullied a lot you know and so it's like at that point in your life you have to decide like am I gonna be miserable all the time or am I gonna like make up a reality where I'm happy and well liked yeah you know oh so that's what okay so he that's what you meant with false happiness kind of yeah it was kind of like um just sweeping the things that weren't really working out yeah. under the rug yeah and declaring happiness anyway which like was good because you know who knows what the other side of it is like depression and like being sad all the time yeah but being fake happy doesn't actually serve you in living your truly best life either you Sometimes know. you can see people smiling and there's something about their smile that is not like completely 100% congruent, right? Yeah. It's like, uh, what is it? Fake there, uh, yeah. I don't know what the word is. In yeah. English. Insincere? Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, there's well, like a Norwegian like word. They, yeah. they, they, it's an act, sort of. Yeah. The, the smile is an act. Acted it's something they've, they've done so much and they're, they're, they put it on so much. And eventually, it just sort of becomes who they are. But it, it's not. It's it, it's something they do, not something that just happens. You know, yeah, wow. and and they're kind of like their 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 inner voice is turned off to to the truth of their of their their soul, yeah. right? They're not yeah. like really like the messages has been blocked because they told it to go away so many times that it just like stopped trying, yeah. or like the pathway is blocked or muddled. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. So, I'm curious. So what do we do then? What? Yeah. What do we do? Like, <laughs> what, do, what do we do with all these fake smiles out there? <laughs> exactly. So you gotta, you gotta find where, where he, what is blocking them, and what is hiding behind the fake smile, right? What is maybe unconsciously hiding? Dude, I'm curious. I'm more curious about uh, your, like, your spirituality approach to it all, because, mm-hmm. uh, like. At the same time, you're this like uh, uh, California kid who's like, uh, <laughs> like I would never with Jersey roots, with Jersey roots. All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> but with, you know, like you're not the typical. I would say when I think of like very spiritual uh, gurus or whatever, there is I think uh, long clothes with purple colors and crystal stones the and Cartoli yeah vibes. Yeah, and it, I mean that's that's cool, but you're talking about the crystal sun. You're talking about, cri- <laughs> about crystal sun. <laughs> you talking about crystals? Yeah, you're right. I'm not that typical spiritual guy with the crystals. I don't got those. <laughs> but then you are. So I'm curious, like, how did that? <laughs> that's fucking hilarious, man. I'm I'm curious how how do you like where what where where, do, Where do I come from? Yeah, like how do you find a spirit? How do you use your spirituality in your personal growth? Because I know some of it. You talked about it yesterday or the day before. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I want to hear your angle on it and how you got to, how you find empowerment in spiritual stuff, kind of. Well, hmm. How I find empowerment in spiritual stuff. stuff. Well, I guess. The, 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 the single fundamental mindset would be that like if you identify with yourself as a soul who is here for evolution, for growth you stop identifying with problems as problems and you start looking at them as growth opportunities. Now you can, you can look at that from a standpoint of just personal development very grounded in three dimensions like of course, you know, your challenges are an opportunity for growth. But the way I look at it, it's almost like even when you're even when you're doing awesome stuff in your life, even when, you know, you've helped a million people, you've made incredible stuff happen, um, you're giving back, you're giving to charity, like you're doing all this amazing stuff, bad shit still happens. Yeah. And it's like if it was so linear, if it was just like you personal develop and you get past all your challenges and then you're in this place where you're like beyond the challenge zone and you're in the happy zone, mm. if it was linear like that, it wouldn't make sense that, you know, even the top, top people on the planet end up with like shit right in their face where yeah. they're just like, whoa, this yeah. rocked me, mm. right? But it's like we all have that. Everyone has stuff that comes up, you know, either on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, on a minute by minute basis that just challenges us and so 
it's almost like there's a release of of struggle when you look at yourself as a soul who is here to evolve. Okay. Because every time these you know, the the ocean of life, right? It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. The analogy I make in one of my YouTube videos is you can either be like the rocks, right? right? That are that are gonna get pounded by the waves over and over again until they crumble and fall, right? You can either be firm in life. Or you can be like a corked glass bottle that just floats up and down on the waves of life. And, and that's kind of what happens in my mindset shift as I release more and more of the misidentification with myself as this bottle or as this body. You know, like, oh, when you feel it like you're this body and you're this mind and you're this person, this ego, yeah. everything that happens, you're like, oh, why is this happening to me? Yeah. And when you're in that place, you're being the rocks. You're being solid and you're having, the wa- exactly, you're having the waves crash on you. Yeah. But when you're just like this soul who is here for an experience and you don't make some of the experiences cool and some of the experiences bad based on your judgment and your perceptions, um, then you kind of become more like that bottle and okay. you're floating up and down and... Um, there's like a, a level of surrender there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Good. Good word for it. Yeah. Acceptance. Kind of, not. Not. But yeah. Surrendering is better word than acceptance. Cause. Yeah. And so the spiritual path lets me do that more and more. Yeah. Yeah. And it also throws more and more shit in my face, which is <laughs> really, which is an interesting part. Yeah. Very much so. Like when you, um, do as much meditation as I do, and when you are like so focused on your spiritual evolution, everything speeds up, and so the speed at which your challenges show up for you also okay. speeds up. You know, so suddenly it's like, fuck, every day there's something going on uh-huh. where it's like, you know, but how, what major do you mean, growth, what major do you mean, challenges. Okay, what do you mean speed up? Like, it just, you know, and this, again, we can bring it back down into just very linear, logical talk. As you begin rapidly developing yourself, yeah, you oh, yeah. are rapidly opening up your weaknesses, checking out your blind spots, you know, getting rid of the shit that doesn't serve you, oh, yeah. you know, and, and when you're doing it through meditation and through spiritual path too, it's like these random things show up that I can imagine that are just like, what the, where did this come from? You know, but it's all there to teach you lessons. Cool. So that's kind of how I, how that's like the base mindset of how I integrate it all in. And then, and then you have this cool guidance system or uh, whatever you use when you, Oh, the segment thing. Can we talk oh, about that? Because I, I, th- I think it's awesome. I, we talked about it a little bit. And I'm like, it's like setting the frame for your life kind of all the time in a good way. In a good way, yeah. Yeah. Did, did he talk to you about that segment I, uh, pending? I was here, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, sure, I'll share that. Um, that's yeah. not my own creation. Um, the first time I heard about that process was from... Abraham, which is uh, Jerry and Esther Hicks. They have a lot of books and a lot. They do a lot. They've been touring for years and years and years. Actually, I think it's just Esther Hicks now. I think Jerry just passed. Okay. Um, but she channels in this consciousness called Abraham, which is like basically these these uh, higher level consciousness beings that use her as a medium for communication. Okay. And they've written dozens of books and have this huge following. And the the process is called segment intending, which is basically every time a new phase of your day starts, it's a new segment. So sitting down for a meal is a segment. Sitting down to do some work is a segment. Podcast. Um, getting on this podcast is that we, oh, I should have said segment before this podcast. We could have set our intentions. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we should just do it right now. Do it yeah, now. Do it now. Oh, okay. That's my next, <laughs> yeah. So, so, <laughs> so a segment, every time there's a segment, you have an opportunity to consciously create your reality yeah. to set the intention for how you'd like to experience that experience. Very proactive, right? Exactly. So if I had remembered, we could have been like, I use the trigger word segment, which I learned from my buddy Trinity. If you're out there, what's up? <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so the trigger word is segment. It's like you realize you're entering a new segment. So you just say segment and that is like the spark to set your intentions. Yeah. So if I had remembered before podcasting, I would have been like segment, I set the intention to sit joyously on this podcast with my buddies, Knut and Morton, and just free flow from consciousness and enjoy myself and assist others in in their development and to show up completely authentic. I set the intention to impact people in a way that improves their lives and has them, you know, take something away from being with us three knuckleheads for 20 minutes. I set the intention to... 
enjoy every part of it, to feel good the entire time, and to have the absolute best, most impactful, most creative statements flow through me as I sit on this awesome podcast. Right, and then you sit down, and it's like you know how your experience is gonna go. Yeah, you just yeah, created yeah. it. Yeah, you know, listeners should do this right now. Yeah, set the intention for listening to the podcast. Hmm. Like, I set the intention to be open to receiving new information, to allowing the best pieces of information that will serve me at their highest to shine through, so my consciousness takes them in and uses them in the highest good for me and everyone else involved in my life. And I set the intention to enjoy myself to enjoy the process and to send lots of love to Morton, Knut and Noah just pumping love at them <laughs> thank you guys we felt it <laughs> that's awesome that's so cool yeah you do that you do that many times a day then yeah. yeah and and the thing is is that if you don't set it's it's just like anything else if you don't create your life somebody else will yeah yes you know so yeah I had the same thing, like, but I, I use the word outcome, but outcome is sort of like you want to get something. Well, intention is, it is my intention. It's not necessarily that you're dependent on getting that outcome in any way. So mm -hmm. I like the word intention better. And it's not necessarily like specific, but it's more like the experience that you want to have, which I also like a lot. Uh, I used it for uh, vacations. Because vacations for me before was just. Uh, now it's vacation time, so now I'm not gonna be proactive. I'm not gonna, you know. It's like uh, turn off period. Yeah, turn off period. But at the same time, when I when I did set my intention, vacation became something more enjoyable. Yeah. Like, like when I was with my family, it was my intention is to connect and be more, you know, present with my family. And then I know that my experience with my family is gonna be so much better than if I was just there, like I was before. I was just yeah. I was there in the same room and stuff, but my intention wasn't straight. So, you know, I could be there for a week and then I left, and our relationship hadn't developed. You know, mm -hmm. all the experience I could have had didn't have. Mm -hmm. So, such a powerful thing to to know before you go into a situation how you want it to be, and you know, at least your intention. Yeah, because most people don't, right? Most people just uh, go through life like going to a party, just going there and. And then if 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 you had expectations that didn't get met, then all of a sudden the party sucks. But if you had an intention on beforehand, like okay, uh, whatever, like whoever people are there are there now, I'm gonna set the intention or the outcome, whatever you call it, to have a great time and meet new people and mm -hmm. spread positive vibes. Then when you come there, doesn't matter who's there, you're gonna have a good time. Right. It's very proactive. And the intention is about you, right? It's not about them. Yeah, you can't ever set an intention for somebody else. No. You can't ever affect somebody else's will. Yeah. You know, or, or that, I mean, that's just a good thing to talk about in personal development. You know, how many people are like, oh man, I just need to make my mom not be this way. Oh, and then yeah. my life will be good. Yeah. And it's like, what a waste of energy that is. Mm. Right. But yeah, you can't ever set intentions for somebody else because it, you can't control somebody else's will yeah and like else. not not only just someone else but something else like everything that is outside your control like if you if you use a lot of energy on stuff that is generally outside of your control then you know that will that will make you suffer <laughs> right yeah it could be like it could be the the angry person behind a counter it could be the like you not getting your money in time or it could be anything yeah, and you can set the intentions for those things. Well, not not for those things not to happen, but for them to happen the way you want them to happen. Okay. Right, like I, you're clicking the 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 transfer money to my bank account thing, yeah. and you're saying I set the intention that this money will arrive at the exact right moment, you know, speedily, and you know, you, so it's like you can't control it if it shows up, but you can uh, be again proactive about trying to create not trying to but actually creating your life with intention like it all starts in here yeah so um if you're consistently seeing angry people at the store i would i would look inside and see where your angry person in the store is hiding yeah right yeah, yeah. you're attracting that experience like i always yeah. see happy people behind the counters and yeah. i always have little chats with them and stuff yeah. right yeah you know and that's because yeah. i'm gonna brighten their day yeah 
and they're gonna I'm gonna look them in the eyes and they're gonna be like, oh my god, this yeah. guy looked me in the eyes, first customer in thousands. Yeah. You know, I'm That's very cool. conscious of that. And it's de- like you definitely have an aura or energy or vibe around you that attracts people because going around in Norway, uh, you, you, uh, it's like you're set apart from other people just because you have your big guy and you move a lot and you, <laughs> <laughs> you smile and laugh and talk loud and, and, and look people into in the, to their eyes and are very welcoming, right? Yeah, yeah. And just like you talk about in passion immersion, like almost like spreading your energy to blocks around you almost mm-hmm. right yeah uh, and i mean i can feel it and people around you probably can feel it. you s- you you said that there was a guy who stopped you in the streets like american or <laughs> yeah what happened yeah well he was just <laughs> this guy was from boston and and he could he could even just tell from like my walk that i wasn't from norway <laughs> <laughs> yeah he's like you walk like an american and he, and he's just like is just very interesting because just by the way I walk by him and the way I make eye contact and just, you know, like my aura or my energy, he doubled back and turned around and came up and was like, what's up, man? And, and we just like started a conversation and ended up being a really cool guy. And that was like my first, I don't know, my first two hours here, like right after I just got off the plane, I was all jet lagged and stuff. And uh, one, of the, one of your students uh, was with me and he was like, that was random. Yeah. I was like, actually, that happens pretty much all the time. Yeah. You know, yeah. just have like a random conversation, really connect with somebody and just like, it just happens when your energy is out here yep. instead of like right close to your body when you're all like centered inside and in your head and like, mm. you know, focused on whatever crap is running through your brain. Yeah. I think a lot of people, uh, I don't know, I would say especially here in Norway, but that's a generalization, but I think a lot of people are like here stuck in their head looking down tugging, everybody <laughs> yeah tugging their yeah like body inside their jacket and i mean they could do i mean maybe tugging their head inside the jacket is not the thing but like yeah having their energy focused inward energy instead of outwards in, right yeah it's about it's probably most of the world you yeah. know 90 percent of the world or 95 percent of the world like even in california yeah, I mean it's what's very. The di- what's open. the biggest difference from Cali in here? Ooh, well, like in terms of people. In terms of people, yeah. You know, there's a lot more yoga where I live in Southern California, <laughs> okay. so there's a lot of people kind of walking around with that yoga energy. You yeah. know, that uh, open, out there energy. I mean, cool. the thing that the thing that I see is that I'm in Oslo. You know, this is a major city, yeah. And so, anytime you're in a major city, everybody is as closed off from each other as they get okay for any culture okay right so if you go to america and you go to some like really friendly quiet town in north california or something people are going to all be walking around saying hello to each other and acting like people yeah right but then if you go to new york city and you expect someone to you know like wait for you to enter the line at the train like good luck no they're not even going to notice you you know um or you'll be in an elevator with 15 people in it and not a word being said and it's like the most I always start conversations in that situation because it's so weird it's like how are you going to pretend I'm not here I'm three inches away from you (laughs) I can smell your breath (laughs) as close to you as sleeping beside you right yeah imagine being in a bed with someone pretending they're not there (laughs) there's no one here there's no one next to me (laughs) and sometimes you know your eyes just or to even towards each other, but just briefly yeah, just look away or look through them, right? But that's just what cities do to people, yeah. you know. Like this is yeah, because there's so many impressions, right? There's so uh, so much going on. You can't you can't process everything, yeah. like every single person. You can't mm. process them all, right? So much information, yeah. You know, especially if you think about our biology being developed in like tribal living, yeah. Right. So you got like. 50 people in the tribe and you know everybody mm. right so you walk around looking at everybody and saying hi and you're not like fearful mm. right but yeah. then you you talk about a city of you know half a million people like oslo and you're just who's that who's that who's that who's that yeah who's that who's that all right and then eventually you just turn off to it all because you, your brain goes on overload yeah and then you become a social weirdo yeah robot yeah. <laughs> you live like so you don't live center in san diego um, I live I live in North County, San Diego, in okay. the Encinitas area, which is 
more, I guess you could call it a suburb. Okay. You know, it's not a city. It's not. I used to live in downtown San Diego, but as Just far like as being a city, downtown is not that big. It's like, okay. you know, they got basically 20 square blocks of actual city. Wow. You know, there's a lot of people. There's millions and millions of people in San Diego, but it's very spread out. Huh. Yeah. You been to LA often? Yeah, I've been up there a couple times, you know, a handful of times. My brother lives in Venice Beach, so um, was there just a couple weeks before Oslo. Is it as crazy as it seems? Yeah, L.A. is pretty crazy, man. Uh -huh. Yeah, if you if you want to, if you're trying to go somewhere that's like 10 miles away from where you are, and you try to drive there in the middle of like rush hour, you'll, yeah. it'll take you hours. Really? Yeah, they don't have they don't have any public transportation there. That's the really? Thing. In Los no, Angeles, ooh. they yeah, don't. There's no trains. There's huh. no trains of any kind. I think they're That's just starting crazy. plans to build one. No trams? No trams, nothing. Like the, the public transportation here in Oslo kicks ass. It's yeah. awesome. Just anywhere you want to go, you're just on a bus instantly. You're on a train instantly. Yeah. In LA, Pretty it's good. like, you got a car? No? Ah, well, kind Sucks. of shit out of luck. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that there's buses and stuff. I haven't taken the bus system in LA. Okay. Um, there's definitely buses, but there's no trains. Wow. Yeah. No subways. No subways at wow. all. Wow. Wow. That's fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> yeah. And there's so many more people there as well. Yeah. It, it's pretty crazy. But they're just, I think, just Starting. started construction or, or just finished planning like this above ground railway. Like Dubai. Uh, I don't know about okay. Dubai. What yeah. do they got there? Yeah, they have this above ground subway. <laughs> Not subway because it's above ground. But yeah, it's like a table now over the bucket. Yeah. Just train, train. Train, yeah. Train, yeah. 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 Have you been to Dubai? Yeah, I was there like for a day or a night because we went to Zimbabwe this summer. Uh, you know, I told you walking with lions. Yeah, or you didn't I tell me about that. No, we walked with like we, like, we went to lion breeding program in in Africa. Insane. <laughs> and you were walking like right <laughs> next to live yeah, yeah. lions. Yep. yep. Like rip you apart if yep. they want to. Yeah, 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 yeah lions. Yeah. And I also I I twisted my ankle so I couldn't walk with them for a week because. They spot the weakest one, <laughs> and they'll just. And if they just play with you, like if they just play with you, they can kill you. They will kill you. They will kill you. It's done. They're so huge. It's <laughs> ridiculous. It's like imagine. Uh, let's uh, translate it into pounds. Like four hundred and fifty pounds. Cat. Cat. Or just imagine a four hundred and fifty pound man running towards you. Uh, 40 miles an hour no how much is that yeah like 40 miles an hour oh my god and then try to tackle you of course he would tackle you right yeah and then all include like this big uh mouth with the <laughs> teeth and this big claws on each it's ridiculous oh it's my ridiculous god. yeah so wait so then you then you just walk next to them yeah and then you have just a stick just in order to <laughs> <laughs> You have to stick. Good player. <laughs> not, 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 not to to hit him or anything. Just to make you bigger if they give you the naughty, uh, naughty look. We they, they teach us like okay, so if the cats give you the naughty look, it means they want to play with you, and if they play with you, they will kill you. So you get, <laughs> <laughs> I know, and you get like a stick. So if they give you the naughty look, you have to be on lookout all the time. So if they give you the naughty look, you have to just raise your stick and say. Iwe, or which means you, or you just say, hey, or you, you know, with your yeah. with your loud voice, you know, and they'll just turn around because they're they're like accepting you as part of their tribe, their group. Oh, uh, okay. So, but the whole thing is to to help the lion to help um, grow the, the the group of lions in Africa. So it's like 101 lions there, and we're breeding them to 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 or the reason we're walking with them is so they can get used to being in the wild because if we just left them for themselves like 60 percent of them would die because they eat their babies and all, everything like a lot of um a lot of things happen uh but so it's you crazy yeah so it's a good thing and then uh, while we were there they they sold some lines to or they made a deal with burundi it's uh a country in Africa which hasn't had lions because of people killing them yeah. like illegally they haven't had lions for like 10 years so now while we were there they they made a deal with that country to to give them five lions so that was like huge like 
so, huge success did for them. Did they get like three chicks and two guys? Something like something that. Something like that. Yeah. Started the lions off in Burundi. Yep. So that's great. I don't know how we got into that conversation. I was going to well, say something. It's, it's but good anyway. That's cool. I don't yeah. know about the lions. Yeah. Put it on the bucket list. It's crazy. One of the lions took a bite out of your girlfriend. What? One of the lions almost like oh yeah 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 her, yeah her jaw S- around, tr- yeah? started to playing with my girlfriend's leg like just like slapping it kind of uh-huh. and then you have to be really careful because yeah <laughs> he went yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and uh, oh one time we walked with them and they saw like a hundred two hundred uh, what's it called uh, the beauty and the beast what's it? wildebeest two hundred wildebeest. So the, the lion, lions went crazy, yep, feeding fe- frenzy. Yep, they started running after them, and we started running after them. Like, hey, it's so cool to get it. Like, if they wow. got, if they catched one, you know, that'd be like a dream come true. Cause it, you, it's rarely you see it, right? Right. Uh, Did you get one or no? They got one, but he got away before we got there. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. You should have helped them with your stick. Yeah, I should have. <laughs> take that wildebeest down. <laughs> I, I've seen um, the this. African tribe, I think it was on the, the show Human Planet, where uh, they basically they they like f- take lions kills. Yeah. So these is like three guys with sticks and six lions, and the lions had just gotten a kill, yeah. and they like rushed at the lions and made all the lions go away. Really? Yeah. Really? And I was like, that is those guys' testicles are down to the floor. In my really? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was just no. three dudes with like barely any clothes on and a stick each, and like no weapons at all. So tribal else. guys, tribal guys. So they had some kind of system doing that. Yeah. Where they wow. Just, they take what the lions killed. Wow. Wow. Yeah, wow. Because that, that's think. impossible. <laughs> if you see them, we see them get fed. The guys, the the male lions. Yeah. I made a video of it on. Uh, if guys, if people want to see, go to passion e bushen. Just put up the link. Dot com. Yeah, I can put up the link. And uh, and you see them run towards, and they, they get fed, and there's a fence between us, and they run like a motherfucker. And when they get there, <laughs> they they growl. Like, <laughs> it's crazy, and those seven there's guys like surrounding. So much energy coming off. Of yeah, it. yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Like... it's ridiculous. Like you, you get afraid. <laughs> Just watching them two meters away from, like, on the other side of the fence, you get, like, you, your adrenaline gets oh my, yeah. pumping yeah. up. So, uh, so the next time you're, um, like, bitching about your internet not being fast enough or something, just think about the three <laughs> African guys who have to chase the lions away in order to get the food to live to eat, right? It's like, the internet, man. <laughs> my download's going so slow. My pirated movie. So angry. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny how we're accustomed to this crazy technology these days. Yeah, like these three huge microphones in our faces right now. Yep. And this is like boom, boom. Chia. I think I think it's healthy for like imagine like just living in a tribe like that for a year or two years. Imagine how much that would have changed you, like your perception of life. Mm. That's on the bucket list for me. Yeah. I'm thinking uh You saw Into the Wild yesterday. No, the day before I showed yeah, you. Yeah. And that's uh, also right. That's an amazing story. Yeah, if you guys haven't seen Into the Wild, uh, it Morning Canute showed it to me the other day, and it's just like, I'm ready for I'm ready for tribal life. Yeah. It's about this guy who just ditches everything of society, and he goes off into the heart of Alaska, and unfortunately, uh, doesn't make it back. But <laughs> he he lives like an amazing experience yeah. of freedom. You know, I think it's something that every guy is kind of like yearning for on yeah. the inside. You know, hmm, yeah, like just a prove it to ourselves that we can yeah, like go what it takes yeah yeah I mean think I mean freedom like think about like, I think most people feel a little restrained in life like in general like they feel like their emotions are restrained they feel like they're they're in this pattern that they can't get out of they have to follow this education they have to do this job they have to you know all those things that they have to do right it's all an illusion you don't have to do shit <laughs> that's the thing. and that's what this this movie is so inspiring because this guy he burns all his money you know, he, he burns his certificate, right? He burns his, uh, burns the certificate, his yeah. license, everything. He just yeah. walks up. Nobody knows where he is. He follows no rules, and he just goes and he lives. He really lives. Yeah, it's awesome. Or, I don't know, we have this friend who's a hitchhiker. Story. He hitchhikes all the time. You know the guy who was there, Ollie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he he every time he's here, he's been hitchhiking here from Germany 
or Copenhagen yeah. or uh, wherever he is, like Poland or whatever. And he's like he's saying the the cool thing about being a hitchhiker is it's it's that it's a fairy tale. You meet someone new, and all of a sudden you have a completely new perspective from someone you never otherwise would have talked to. Right. It's learning, like connecting with people is growing, and he does that all the time. So it's kind of the same thing. Like I don't know, maybe it's like a a, a deep a desire to run away in a way from society. I don't know. But I I just think that a freedom society yeah. it's like we are living with this constant undercurrent of enslavement. Yeah. You know, like I was walking by the castle today on my way back from from yoga and I'm looking through this window and it's like a it's huge screen TV and it's it's people are playing like FIFA soccer like on the video game. Right, and I look in a little bit closer, and it's like all the castle guards. There's like ten of them in a room, really? like cheering and like playing each other in soccer, like video <laughs> games. And I'm just thinking, like these motherfuckers can arrest me, and like that's you know, and that and that's just kind of like how it goes. Is that there's just this constant undercurrent of like, yeah, you're free unless somebody wants you to not be, and yeah. then you're not, you know. And, and and I mean, it's just like even just the fact that there is an institution that could put me somewhere against my will, even just that is like, weird, right? Yeah. And it's in the background, you know, it's like, yeah. it's like the matrix exists and it's government. Right. And, and, uh, I don't want this to turn into like an anti-government. Oh yeah. Rant. Let's do it. Like, let's, Rock on. Let's, let's do go it. Down with the government. <laughs> <laughs> Anarchy. Ron Paul. <laughs> Ron, oh, Ron Paul yeah. is my man. Yeah. Um, but no, it's just like, it's like, you know, the the movie The Matrix, where it's like uh, the, the thing in. about The Matrix is that the people couldn't know they were in The Matrix. Like, oh wait, no, no, this is what it's like. In The Matrix, they talk about how they made a utopian society, right? Yep. Like a perfect society. Yeah. It didn't work. Yeah. Because of like the subconscious human programming of like uh, desiring like to suffer in some way. Yeah. Which I think is like growth and change, really. Um. I think the same thing exists for us with just like the fact that there is government, that there is police, that there is these laws that like, you know, it's like this undercurrent of not freedom hmm. that's just there, you know? And, and I think that as you start really reflecting at a higher level of awareness and consciousness, like the guy in Into the Wild was, yep. you know, he was very learned. Yo, right? yeah. He read so many books and by reading so many books from so many amazing authors, he started to see like, everything in my life is bullshit. Yep. Right? And I think that's kind of the way it feels for most guys who become educated in, in the truth of, of how everything really works in society and what's really going on. Eventually, you're just like, shit, those guys could, you know, those guys kind of run things. And it's like, I don't run things. My life's not really, truly my own. Even if it's just, you know, point. 9% or you know 33% of your income depending on how real you are with your taxes right it's just like there's this subtle you're not free yeah you know I think that's why that guy went off in the oh yeah year, totally you know? yeah and so inspiring right so inspiring because he yeah that's what I took from it as well like just completely complete freedom complete uh doing with following his heart kind of but uh, let's do turn it into a government thing let's let's <laughs> listen to <laughs> i want to listen to like all the all the because i have some like i don't like the term conspiracy theory but still i have my thoughts on stuff and i'm also <laughs> i have my thoughts on stuff guys <laughs> I, I call i call them the higher levels of truth yeah. not conspiracy theories no. higher yeah. levels of truth let me hear some like w like Ooh. Like Ooh. you said, okay. Really the reason we right <laughs> the reason we started talking about this the other day, or just barely touching in on it, was because uh, we were in the Passion Immersion House, and you and who was it, Rob, and you and me and uh, some of the guys talked right. about that. Also, that Mitt Romney has already been chosen as president, and this and that. Yeah, and somebody called it out before. Yeah, it? yeah. This famous blogger was blogging about it. Um, what, what, like, who is it? The blogger. Uh, his name is Benjamin Fulford. Okay. And he used to be one of the head heads of Asia for what magazine is it? Um, 
I want to say Time magazine, but I don't think it's Time. Okay. It's like a, but it's like a, a magazine on that level of okay. like you know worldwide distribution. Yeah. And he used to be the head of the Asia department, and he wanted to write this expose on this huge scandal that was happening in Japan, and and the editors totally chopped it down, and he realized like how corrupt everything really is, and really? so he just like very publicly left them. Okay. And as he left them, um, because he did it so publicly, uh, these he got basically approached by like the secret societies okay. right and and eventually he became like this reporter where he's got contacts in all the like secret agencies around the world like he's got contacts in the KGB and the CIA and M16 and like the Yakuza underground and like so he like does these reports every week and just like blogs about the real shit that's going down wow i mean so Let's let's zoom out of it. Like believe what he that guy says or not. Believe the quote unquote conspiracies or not. Let's just think about this very logically. Every single government around the world has a secret organization that is funded by the government that runs that is run by the government. I mean that alone should tell you that you probably don't know what's really going <laughs> on. Yeah. Right. Like if every go you know the CIA M16 like if every major government has a little secret club mm. that does stuff that you're not allowed to know about that should clue you in that maybe there's some stuff you don't really know about that's going on. Right. Like yeah. that's pretty logical. Yeah. Right. Cause when, when I start talking about this stuff, people are like, Oh, conspiracy theories, you know, but it's like, I just look at it as deeper truth. Like if you look into this stuff, you find a new awareness. And if every time you hear about this stuff, you go, Oh, conspiracies. Well then you yeah. just, you're completely close to it and you never, yeah. Learn about it, you and know? I wonder why that is so like the word conspiracy theory why that is like it's almost wrong if you're a cons if you're cons conspiring well, yeah you believe in those things if you you're know? conspiring if you're even if you're even thinking that there's something you don't know about something like hidden then you know oh come on you know it's weird it's it, testing the matrix why is that yeah why is that why is that so bad you know well it's just ma it's just mainstream it's just the group think you yeah. know yeah. like uh, us People like us and, and the people listening to this podcast, we are a unique group of individuals sure. who think with our own thoughts, at least occasionally, no. right? Like if you truly follow the system, your brain is not your own. If, you like, if you're watching six hours of TV a day or whatever oh. the average might be, your brain is not, your desires are not your own, no, right? Yeah. You do not own your thoughts or your desires or your wants or your beliefs about life. That's a fucking good point. Yeah. You know? So I mean, and, but that's like a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> that's Imagine the, the average in America is like six hours, right? Uh, something like that. Yeah. Oh, the last time I, I looked at something on that, it was like yeah, five so, or so seven hours. It's like it's it's so insane. many hours. <laughs> so, so, so it's eight hours of work, maybe. You know, then there is six hours. So no matter what math you do, you have you spend more time consuming other people's beliefs about reality than you think for yourself. Right. You have to because the math. You know, right you know? at at the job, you're you're <laughs> you're listening to what your boss says is co-workers. important, and your coworker saying is important, which is usually some you know some bullshit about the copy machine not working or some <laughs> other stereotype. We can talk not only about that, but but, look, <laughs> but think about all the people watching news three times a day, like right. watching news three times a day. Right, yeah. like it's that important, like. Or Especially even, since even, the news exactly. never changes. It's just about um, everything they want you to be scared of. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but I totally agree. I watch news. I could like, or actually I haven't, now I haven't watched news in a month at least. And But sometimes I do just to, to check up on if there's like any important stuff. Do you that get I real news in Norway or is it just kind of I about I think we like get realer news than Fox News. But, uh, yes. But n there's still like, well, there's a filter the thing is that there is, people need to think about that there's a filter between like what's happening and all the aspects of what's happening and all the different sides of what's happening. There's a filter between that and then there's like a marketing filter. Right. And then to the news channels. So whatever news you get, there's definitely an angle there because they have to have an or quote unquote have to have an, an angle Cool, because they, they, they have to have a bad guy, they have to have a good guy, and they have right. to have the the story factor sells like like hell, you know? Right. Yeah. And um, 
you know, it's just, it's not really journalism. No. Because journalism is just the facts. Yeah. Right? And, but we don't get that because, you know, the, you could say it's not good for ratings. Yeah. Right? They got to hype it up a little bit. Yeah. Put their spin on it. Yeah. Um, or you could just say that the media stream is controlled by certain people with certain interests. But it's definitely not the entire truth. Yeah. A lot of people think it is. They, you know, a lot of people think, well, they said that and he has uh, credentials and he looks important. He's a news guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's wearing a suit and everything. Yeah. He must tell the truth. Like some people think that what's being said like of, of the anchorman or what's being said in the uh, from the reporters or whatever is like that is the the truth. The truth. The most serious thing they can watch. It is the truth. Like you know but still slowly it's evolving like because of internet people are getting more conscious. Have you seen vice.com? Yeah. Some of their stuff no, it's good vice.com. Vice.com. Yeah. yeah, what do they do? A lot of yeah. good journalism. They go to like places, completely, completely fucked up places in the world, yeah. and do reportings from there. Like, for example, like uh, a place, uh, like what's the place in South America? Syria? Called? No, uh, pa, 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 no, pa, 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 pa. Texas. No, South America. <laughs> <laughs> South America. Pa. Anyways, there's a country Canada? there. There's like a a, ten, a tenth of the population in America and as many killings, you know? Like yeah. 54 killings in in that town a day, you know? And it, shit's not getting covered at all, you know? <laughs> so, so when Vice get there, they're like sh- telling all those like facts about the place and I'm like... Like well, why? It, it, why is there no absolutely no uh, like um, oh, Mike Smith attention, attention yeah. to this? Right. Like absolutely nothing. It's more attention to Miley Cyrus showing her lips. You know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that should be covered the, though. That should be covered. The bottom line <laughs> is is that the world is in a place of abundance right now, where we could actually have nobody in poverty, nobody. Homeless, nobody yep. without education, yep. and nobody without food. Yeah, the, the supply chains are there. The infrastructure is there. Technology, technology right is there. It, it's all there. But if you start covering and showing what's really going on in the world and, and showing what's really possible, people will wake up to that rapidly. And there's a whole structure, a whole very, 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 very large money-making structure that thrives off the opposite it being in existence. Oh yeah. You know, so that's all it is, is that it's like, it's kind of like growing pains right now where people like us and our generation specifically, we're seeing everything that doesn't work in the world. And the fact that if we keep living this way, we'll actually destroy the planet mm. sooner than later. Yeah. And uh, we're ready to change it. But the system that exists right now is, is entrenched in the way it is working. Yeah. You know, it's like trying to, it's like trying to teach someone who's not open to self-development that they should self-develop. Yeah. Right? And they're like, no, like, why would I self-develop? I make a trillion dollars a year off yeah. you all being sick and suppressed. Yeah. Right? Or whatever the yeah. case may be, yeah. right? Yeah. So, um, we're just going to have to keep pushing. Do right? you think there's a, <laughs> have you heard of, there's a new book called Abundance? Yeah. It's awesome. Have you read it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, I've, I've read it. like ten pages of it. Yeah, and I I've have seen, you? No, I have seen only seen like trailers, documentaries, and uh, a TED talk on it. What is it about? It's about a <laughs> very positive future. It's about the lack of anything. There's just, just lack of <laughs> lack scarcity. Or, it's about or, scarcity. It's about scarcity. Abundance could be many things. Please. It's okay. it's yeah. about a positive future. That it's about what he just talked about abundance in the world. Okay. Uh, it's but, like where technology is and yeah, and how it's going. Like, mm. but uh, the reason I'm asking is because I want to know like how you all this doomsday talk, you know, this this year and last year and stuff. And I had this conversation with my girlfriend because uh, she's like she's like totally given up on people she's like team animals and <laughs> you know and uh, and I, I I totally understand that because you know there's there and there's a, a f- there few people can fuck up for a lot of people you know yeah but at the same time I have this uh, sometimes I think that and but other times I have this very abundance positive 
uh, futuristic projections uh, that it's going to be like the technology is progressing so fast and pe more and more people are getting computer more and more people are connecting through internet facebook and like i know more about islam now than i did five years ago and i can relate to muslims in a way that i never could 2001 you know right and all that and people are becoming more and more uh, open-minded and stuff like that but you know there's a balance there are we going to make it in time yeah, either we'll make it or we'll die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one, one or the other. Done. Um, <laughs> either we'll make it or we'll be totally done. Uh, but no, I, I believe we're going to make it. And, um, you know, there, there's it's, it's the beautiful thing is that it's a couple quick shifts. Mm. Like, think about it. Um, water, clean water to drink is a problem around the world, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you can agree that there is plenty of other energy uh, technologies out there besides gasoline, right? So gasoline, um, we're kind of, you know, those technologies are being suppressed because, you know, the oil industry makes so much money, yeah. um, et cetera, right? So, but when the shift does happen, it happens quick. And these oil tankers that are carrying millions and millions of gallons of oil around the world start carrying millions and millions of gallons of fresh water around the world, yeah. right? And then all of a sudden, all these people who have no water have plenty of water, Right. Or like America, who has 150 plus uh, worldwide uh, army, you know, military bases, where we have trained, capable, ready teams of people. Uh, instead of blowing up the whole world, we start building the whole world, mm. right? All of a sudden, we have people who are ready to put up infrastructure. Boom, 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 boom. A whole core of engineers who can build buildings and create the necessary, you know things for schools how can it's just we, like so how it all happens so fast if we yeah. when if, like we how can how can how can that shift be like how do, how do we save the world no haven't how, how do we save, you the save, world? save the world uh uh but how can subscribe that shift? to my blog <laughs> <laughs> no haven't .com. Yeah. what about um, like how do you think that shift uh, could happen because it sounds to me like okay then we need to figure out a way that the people making money now can make money doing that instead. Because it's right. Good. right now, it seems like it's all about money. All right. You know us? Hey! Hey! What's up, man? Jonas here. Hello. Have hey. a good time? Yeah, I'm Noah. Jonas. Jonas. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Yeah, Jump good. in. Jump in. Yeah, we're having a podcast conversation about the end of the world. <laughs> 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 Or about how, how the end of the world is not coming. Yeah. Well, so uh, from a spiritual perspective, yeah. my guru talks about um, how roughly 500 years from now will be when the perfect race is, is born. And we are like, the, we are the, the beginning of that really? perfect race. Perfect race meaning um, everybody being enlightened, okay. having full capacity, you know, full um, knowledge of, of their true truest self okay of, of their true potential okay. of their ability to um you know basically when you're fully enlightened you're clairvoyant clairaudient clairsentient you can you know yeah. it's it's uh it's in everybody's capabilities right so um so he talks about it about how that's going to start in about 500 years so i, I figure if we're going to have a, a race of fully enlightened beings creating on then this it'll earth, happen then yeah yeah well, no, no, it'll happen way before that. Okay. But I just figure we're not going to die if that's going to happen in the future. Exactly. You know, maybe some of us will die, you know, there's some shifting going on. Um, but that's kind of been going on for like yeah, a yeah. while now. Yeah. You know, like and mad natural disasters and things have been happening for years now. Yeah. And we don't know, like, we don't honestly know if there were people living on the earth, like before before like before the dinosaurs so before like a time on the earth and there were people living there and then poof, everyone gone and then new life started developing we don't know because like what do, what do we actually know from now and like two hundred thousand years ago or yeah but what we really ago? have well documented yeah. like you know a couple thousand years yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly it's nothing yeah a couple thousand years is nothing compared to like eternity or since the big bang right it's nothing yeah i don't know but probably nothing it's like a no it is. it is you know the big bang is billions of years ago or you know yeah so um no this is definitely not the first time that 
that human beings have evolved to a high level of intelligence. Mm. I mean, look at the pyramids. Yeah. Explain those. Yeah. Right. We can't build those today. Oh. We with with our most powerful cranes really? and our best technology. Some of the stones in the pyramids came from r- basins that were like rock quarries that were 800 miles away. <laughs> right. And, and these are like 40 ton slabs and they're all they are all perfectly Shit. aligned within within like one centimeter of perfection on the angle going all the way up Whoa. and it's like we have we can't even do that today wow and so but but you know what do you see in the history books you see like a bunch of slaves pulling like <laughs> pulling a rock over some logs right <laughs> like okay yeah that's how that happened aliens definitely aliens so many aliens so dude many aliens. <laughs> tons of spaceships everywhere <laughs> <laughs> wow. Who knows? No, aliens are real. I mean, I think I think you have to be dumb to think that aliens aren't real. Because it's so big. The, the probability, the mathematical probability of, of other intelligent life in the universe is, is um, infinity, yes. Yeah, right? right? There <laughs> is, right? Like, um, but even just, even just um, logically, I mean, think about it. All that there needs to be for there to be like spaceship traveling aliens coming here is a society somewhere else in the universe or this galaxy who is about 50 years more technologically advanced than us. Yeah. Right? Where life evolved um, and they're 50 years ahead of the game and so they've got their little warp ships. And, they're and 50 checking. years is absolutely nothing. Right? Exactly. So <laughs> they what is the potential warp, of they that? Got their warp ships. They got their little <laughs> warp ships and stuff going on. They can beam study, on. You know? you know, I'll, I'll, I'll even, I'll just go out there. I'll just put it out there. I don't even care. I, I've seen alien spaceships before. Really? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So this podcast <laughs> just got real. <laughs> so okay. So I'll share the story. I'll share the story. It's, it's, um, it's recent. It was uh-huh. about a month ago. Uh, so before I came to Oslo, I was in Mount Shasta, California which is the highest volcano in America, and it's this crazy vortex of energy. There's just, you know you're in a vortex because you're in the middle of like country, midland, California, but then you like walk into the, like the vegan, gluten-free, super health food store that's just like, you know, I can't even find that shit in Oslo, okay. right? <laughs> so it's just, this, and the people that are there, and, and it's just, you know, it's just like crystal shop tarot cards crystal shop reiki <laughs> spiritual tours vision quests grocery <laughs> store for health food crystal. Um, you know cri- yeah it's just like non-stop right so a very special place right okay and it was the evening of the uh august 31st so the evening of the blue moon there was two full moons in one month okay. and so me and i was camping with a buddy we had an rv Um, And we went up to this place called Castle Lake, which is like 8,000 feet elevation alpine lake. And we were just looking at the full moon and just connecting with the moon, you know, releasing our stuff that that wasn't serve us, what we were ready to get. Yeah, just, you know, just releasing (laughs) everything, you know, releasing each other's stuff and (laughs) releasing our own, uh, you know, releasing that which does not serve us. Okay. Um, And so we're driving back down and it's like, maybe 11.45, close to midnight. And we're looking up at Mount Shasta, which is like 15,000 feet tall, and about 1,000, maybe 2,000 feet directly above the exact peak, there's this thing just floating there. And there's there's red light, blue light, and like yellow, greenish light coming off of it, like, uh, like rotating lights. And me and my buddy, we just like stopped the car and we're just looking at it. And it's not moving at all. It's just, you know, shining these alternating colored lights and floating completely stationed at midnight over the center of the mountain. And you were sober. both. We were totally sober and we're just looking at it. And I'm like, shit, dude, that's an alien spaceship. (laughs) And he's like, yeah, that is definitely an alien spaceship. And we're just sitting there and it's just like, yeah, we're just looking. It's like, okay, um, it's either an alien spaceship or it's a helicopter with unique colored lights that decided to float directly over the center of Mount Shasta at midnight on the full moon and not move at all for the 10 minutes we were watching it. Wow. Right? So you can decide what it was. Maybe it was a helicopter, but it didn't move at just, all. What about just What about just the pole with lights? There, no, there's no pole there. It's over the center of the mountain, 2,000 feet above it. 
Like there's there's no pole there. That is not what it was. So, what? <laughs> but then we also saw that same thing again, like a couple nights later. But okay, so you s- looked at it for ten minutes and hmm, saw an uh, UFO, and then you drove home. Yeah. But why? Di- <laughs> exactly. <laughs> why didn't you go there? Like, why didn't you? Oh, it was, it, there's nowhere to go. It was, you know, it was, we were looking at it. Ma- the mountain is like probably about two miles away from us, and then you know it's a, it's fifteen thousand feet tall. <laughs> go there like, okay. we're, we're just wow. gonna walk on up it's like it's a mountain that you have to like summit and like use like ice axes and stuff to get to the top of did you have you know? oh did you have binoculars or anything no no but I mean they, I, you know you can call it whatever you want to call it I was just like I was just looking at an alien spaceship in my reality <laughs> that's crazy <laughs> and then uh, and then two nights later we were driving up to Mount Shasta because you can actually drive up to about eight thousand feet tall. Okay. Um, it's the it's the second highest road in all of North America. Okay. And so we drove up there, and we're, again we're driving kind of late at night. It's like eleven thirty, and we're driving up there, and we're like playing this trance music, and it's like it's like really cool, like you know house music playing. And as we're driving up, and we're getting towards the top, we look off in the left, and going just like kind of like through the through the fields through the prairies is the same thing, the same ship thing. Whatever it was. How far away? Uh, It's probably, you know, a quarter mile away or something. But it just kind of, like, flew through the fields and, like, off to the distance. And it was just, like, again, we were seeing the same, like, it had red light blinking off it, a blue light blinking off it, and, like, a yellowish, greenish light blink off it. And it was just kind of, like, cruising through the mountain and just like, oh, there's that alien spaceship again. Like, they're hanging out. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe it's a Scientology thing where... uh the end of the earth now and the aliens are going to come pick the Yeah, the Scientologists are getting picked up so they can get, you know, get off the planet in time. Yeah. Right. <laughs> no, but, um, what Have I you heard... Have seen Tom Cruise lately? <laughs> Have he's I seen gone. what? Tom Cruise? I haven't seen him lately. He might be... No. He's he off the to, planet. He bought, Maybe. A, he bought a... like a place on the moon. Yeah. 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 Probably. Oh, he did, right? Yeah, he did. That's crazy. What? He, he bought some land on the moon? Yeah. Nice. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes That's sense. Good, good investment. Good, Tom. <laughs> good investment. Uh, good job, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, I have no other explanation. I mean, I... But could it have been something else? I could have... Sure. Sure. Oh, sure. I think it's harder to explain it as something else than it is to explain it as what it really? what, you know, was an alien spaceship. Hmm. No, otherwise, the only other thing it could be, because I don't know any other vehicles that just hover in place besides a helicopter. So if it wasn't an alien spaceship, it was a helicopter that was hovering at midnight at 17,000 feet, um, <laughs> not moving at all. With and lights. With, with weirder color lights than you usually did see. Did you only see the lights or did you see the actual vessel? No, I can only see the lights really. Did you hear anything? Far away. No, no sounds. Did Maybe it was... <laughs> Um, yeah, there's uh, actually no, we didn't open our windows. There's, I don't think there would have been any sounds. Yeah. Maybe alien noises were coming out of it. That's the they're like beep, 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 beep. six thousand years ahead in technology. Hello, Earthlings. That's crazy. Uh, I thought like. Another thing is like, okay, imagine the universe like being eternally big and then also add new dimensions, right? Right. How do, like, we couldn't know if there's a fourth or fifth or sixth dimension where people or someone or some kind of consciousness are living here right now, right? Right. There, or somewhere there actually else. there is. Huh? There, there is. Like, what people talk about at Mount Shasta all the time is that the Lumerians are this, these beings that ascended a long time ago into the fourth dimension and they actually live inside the mountain. Really? what people talk about, that there's a light city there. And um, this, this other, uh, this spiritual teacher that I, I follow, uh, her name is Trisha Kelly, and, and she, this is crazy, she was on a pilgrimage to Mount Shasta at the same time I was there. And um, some of the spiritual teachers that she was talking with said that all these light workers were being called to Shasta right now to empower the earth to give 
Mother Earth more energy because what's happening right now is the Earth is evolving in its vibration. It's it's ascending. It's raising in vibration. That's what's happening. Okay. And that's why you're seeing you know protests worldwide. And, yeah, yeah. And, and it's all culminating at the same time. Technology changing and the vibration of the Earth changing. And this 2012 prophecy. It's basically the ascension of Earth and the people who are ready for it. So it's the hmm. uh, increase in vibration. And what's on the other side is is a period. Of, of happiness unlike what we know right now harmony happiness world peace you know that hmm. kind of thing the kind of thing they were going for in the 60s but it was a little too early yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i mean they had a serious movement back then but they didn't have the internet because there's a lot of movements now right uh, what about uh, what's it called the uh, what's the people demonstrating outside the banks in america oh occupy wall street yeah what's that what's that all about Uh, it's basically about and what's um, happening right now. Is it still doing it? Yeah, I've been following it too much lately, but it's about check it out. You know, it's about all the people who've woken up to how corrupt the financial systems are. Yep. And how all that really works with like the Fed and printing money and inflation and bailouts to corporations who really run our government and, and that kind of stuff. The interest behind it all, right? The yeah, I mean the the enslavement behind it all, really. Uh. You know, uh, and and so they're protesting that. And huh. it's just this big old mess because because some people are like some people understand that it's that it's not about money, you know, and, and, and some people don't. Right. So it's not about money. Really, it's about the fact that the structures that we run our world with don't work and they need to change and people need to become aware of what's not working so we can change. Right. But a lot of people are just like. Those lazy protesters, like they're, they should just get a job, right? Okay. And then some of the protesters are thinking, like, give us money. Like, what we're here for is free money, right? Like, Wall Street's got too much money. We want some of it, and that's not what it's about at all. It's about taking down the structures of, you know, a Federal Reserve bank that runs our world. You yeah, know? like the Matrix. Leverage. Exactly, it's yeah, taking whole, down the top level of the Matrix of the, the whole system that's not working. Right, of the whole system. That's not right, working. worldwide, there's more debt in the world than there is um, money. <laughs> Period. I mean, that's pretty. <laughs> really? Pretty, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? Oh, uh, exactly. So there's more debt in the world than there is money. So the whole world is technically bankrupt. Technically. There was wow. a woman, wow. we talked about this in the podcast before, where there was a, there was a woman from TED Talks, or mm. like something like that, in visiting Passion Merchant, mm. the first one. And she was saying that this, this, the whole financial system of the world doesn't, doesn't, doesn't go together. The math doesn't go up. It doesn't, doesn't work. No. It can't work. It's impossible for it to work. Right. But, and also, you know, because there's so many things wrong with it. One, for one, it's based on interest. Like, it, on ex it's based on exponential growth. Which you know it's not possible for a long. It has to crash eventually over and over again. And then there's all this corruption and everything. You know it it just can just can't work. Mm. And she had some solution for it, but I don't know because it seems like love. Well, love, L love yeah, is love the answer. All. I don't know, man. It's it. It seems like to for for one element of society to change, everything has to change. Like it all has to go down, and you know I don't know. Hmm. Well, that, that's what's happening though, because all elements of society are broken. Yeah. It's not just it's not just the financial system; yeah. it's the the system. Everything is broken, huh. right? Like I don't want to get into all doomsday. of the things that are broken. <laughs> no, it's it's it's. It, I don't look at it as doomsday. I look at it as as birth. Yeah. I look at it as the start of of yeah. life. Yeah, you can look at it two ways. You can look at it as death, or you can look at it as the beginning, the end or the beginning. Right, and they're the same point on the circle, right? Yeah. Yeah. As with so many other things, you know, in life. What's interesting though is that the the since it's broken, it's also very very complicated, right? So a lot yeah. of people who are very conscious and very smart and intelligent, they don't want to spend their life going into that. You know, they want to avoid it. Whereas other people go into that and are sort of puppets. They, they you know. It's very very weird because I, I know a lot of people who could do a lot of d good stuff, but instead they would rather start their own company. They would rather do stuff outside the systems because it's just too much work for them to spend their whole life in bureaucracy, for example. Yeah, well, the the, the I don't know how it is in, in Norway. I'm assuming something similar, but it's much um, simpler in Norway, but still simpler. You know? Yeah, in America, um, our government is run by lawyers. Okay. Right, and and what oh. are lawyers? How's that? How's that? 
because that's who gets elected. It's crazy. Like oh, if you, really? If you well, yeah. If you look at government, there's no like engineers in government. There's no artists in government. There's they're they're like missing all the spec. It's all just like lawyers, or or people with a a, a political background or or something like that. And, and it's just it's so lopsided. And 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 the lawyers have the largest lobby in all of you know the largest influence in yeah. all of America. So. Check this out. This is some crazy stats. The United States has 5% of the population of the world, uh, 74% of the world's total lawyers, and, <laughs> and 94% of the world's total lawsuits. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, so my now, God. Yeah. That's now, crazy. Now you know why my corporation uh-huh. has, like, somebody to handle, like, corporate veil protection and, oh, yeah. and uh, oh, yeah. you know, corporate book and, like, everything. Because... You know, I, I look at it almost as a breeding ground for amazing entrepreneurs because it's so hostile that you could get sued for something stupid shit and just your whole business stripped from you. It's so hostile that it forces you to be over compliant oh, yeah. and forces you, it's like it's like survival over of the fittest, deliver, yeah. right? It's like the the people who weren't exceptional, well, they got sued and they fucking lost it all, yeah. right? But the people who are exceptional can can thrive. Right, so but it's just it's just crazy because they they run our government too. Oh my god! Yeah. So they thrive on that bureaucracy. Huh. You know, you know the simplicity of like do unto others. That's hard to be a lawyer when when that's the law, right? When that's the only law. Wow. Do unto others. Yeah, yeah. What you, you done to yourself? Yeah. Right. It's like who was a jerk in this situation? <laughs> well, he killed a man. You know, it's like okay. He's wrong, but no, that's not how it actually works. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm not going to pretend to know anything about law, though. So, so everyone listening, don't think that I feel like I know anything about Like, my dad's a lawyer, and it's not like that. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I'll step back. I, I, I retract you, that topic. You talked about uh, how the how the world is run by a few people. Last time we talked about this. Can you explain it? Um, yeah, it just is, right? So it's like uh, the Federal Reserve prints money for the United States, right? Every dollar that is created is created on interest, right? Okay. The, the United States literally borrows its currency from this entity called the Federal Reserve, okay, which is not part of the United States. It's its, its own company. Oh, really? Right. Okay. So the people who make our money hand it to us with ingrained interest. So, uh, so the whole country the, is in debt. Then. The whole country is in debt and owned by. So, like you know, and some people own the Federal Reserve, right? It's a company. Yeah. So some people own that, right? So yeah. if you own all the money in the world, do you think you control a lot of what happens in the world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. And there's a lot of um, select people who have a lot of money, which means a lot of power, um, and they kind of all have their little masterminds about how to maintain that power and uh, have things not change and not have the people have power. Um, and, and that's, that's kind of you know, as much as needs to be said, I think. It's like yeah, because you said like... Uh, follow the stream of money upwards exactly. and, you, and you land in a couple people's laps. Yep. And then, you know, so your, your life is not your own. It would be awesome to be that guy though. You know, hey, what do you, what do you, what do, you do for a living? Well, I kind of own the money. The yeah, world. like I own the world. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, the only problem is is that a lot of those people aren't so heart centered. Yeah, you know they 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 think that they're better than everybody else because they've gotten to that level, yeah. and so they think that it's their job to kind of rule us, right? And so that's why there's all these huh. you know conspiracies occurring oh, about yeah, like, yeah, how they're they're supreme race or like it, mindset. Exactly. Yeah. Well, another thing you want to think about it is. Um, that the Nazis after World War II, they didn't just all disappear. Like, uh-huh. they didn't, you know, they, they didn't all just go like, oh man, you know, that whole taking over the world thing, uh, we were wrong. I don't believe any of the stuff I, I believed all this time and I'm done being a Nazi, right? And so, so that didn't happen, right? They didn't just switch their mindset because they lost the war. Uh, they took, they had massive assets at that point, you know, like they robbed all the gold from like all of Europe. Right. And so they kind of took that stuff 
offshore, you know, left Germany or wherever they needed to go to hide mm-hmm. out, and they went for Plan B, you know, which was basically uh, take down America. Which uh, you can actually there's this book. Um, it's like this. Uh, I forgot the name of it. It's this, basically this. What what what? Uh, co- yes, this communist manifesto, with like a 52 point plan outlined for how to infiltrate and and take down America from the inside out by like corrupting our culture and, and that, you know yeah. all these little making pull, basically pulling all these little levers that when you combine them all together it's like the society is fucked right and and that that book was written in the 50s just after world war 2 and and so plan b instead of like let's take over the world with force like you know tanks and stuff they're like we can't do that because america is too strong and we got to take them out but they can't take us out military so they took us out from the inside out would you call right. it a book um, is this a theory a, or is no no it's a real book that you can like yeah yeah but is the the like is this happening or is this a theory yeah if you look at the 52 point plan and what their plans were it's like 48 or 49 of the things have clearly happened in the last 50 years those bulls are, yeah oh those bulls they made God. are coming through that's the right. scary part it's, it's like then so it's not like America's government is bad there's a small group of people with you know hidden agendas and interests inside the government that are pulling the right levers and the right strings to make the right things happen for their plan of you know owning the world mm-hmm. and so it's very uh yeah it's very conspiracy theory stuff but it all just kind of makes sense like i mean what would you do if you were a nazi and you obviously believe in your cause right you you were like ready to murder the whole world who didn't believe you yeah um and you have like all this gold and like all the wealth of europe backing you up would you just like Quit. call it quits <laughs> or would you like try something else maybe wow. you know so um that's crazy it's, it's, most people don't ever think about that but it's just again it's i like to break things I like to take things back from their like crazy conspiracy theory level yeah. to like, let's just think about this logically, yeah, right? Yeah. There's a whole bunch of people who make a lot of money off you not knowing the truth. Yeah. You know, so that one do you think they want you to ne- learn the truth, right? Like the pharmaceutical industry makes oh, yeah. trillions of dollars Woo! off you having no idea how to actually keep yourself healthy yep. so that you have to come to them for yeah. pills and surgery and all, you know, they make money off you not being well. Yeah. So is it a surprise that the best information for how to actually maintain your body is not what is mainstream? Exactly. Right? Like, it's just logical. Yeah. It's like, no, they're running a business, and that business is you being sick. Yeah, yeah. You know? There's this, so. there's this, I don't remember what country in Asia, but there's a country in Asia who you pay subscription to your doctor for keeping you well. Really? Yeah. yeah. Japan. Japan? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's they awesome. Get, they, they get less and less money when you're sick. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's that's a great way to have. So for those of you who couldn't hear it, because he doesn't have a microphone, uh, they get paid less money when you're sick yep. and more money when you're well. Yep. I love that. Imagine, we right? Imagine worldwide if we had that. Why? Like, that's just... The, that's so simple. You can... <laughs> I mean, that's so simple. You can explain it to a five-year-old. Right. Like, if the five-year-old girl will be like, but daddy... Like, wouldn't make it make more sense if they got paid for keeping them healthy? Right. And you could, you, you'd be like, the doctor would be like, Well, well that's not the way it works, little girl. <laughs> that's not, yeah, exactly. That's Just not how it's run. Go to school for a few more years and get indoctrinated <laughs> in what we want you to think and come back to me. And I'll give you a flu shot. Okay. It's, not, you, it's not like doctors aren't needed. It's not like you have to... There's of course there's a need for like if you break your leg you need surgeon right like right and like, they need money to do that surgery but yeah. on the surface level like the like the pills and the like yeah just like pills are the least natural thing my animal works it's yeah nice. yeah well I mean especially because I did <laughs> um I did a, a a weekend workshop with this guy Don Tolman okay I think I mentioned to you guys. Uh, for those of you listening, the Don Tolman, T O L M A N dot com. This guy is called the uh, Cowboy of Whole Food Medicine. He's healed literally every condition under the oh, that's sun. That's the guy I told yeah, about. Yeah, using nothing but food, 
right? And so, mm-hmm. did you know that you can cure heart disease in in four to six weeks using nothing but grapefruit? Okay. So hey, heart disease. Heart like, disease, like clogged arteries. Okay. You can clear. You can heal that in four to six weeks using nothing but grapefruit and water. Really? Yeah. I mean, he explained the whole thing to us. All you, you know, all you do is you know is you you eat two grapefruits a morning every morning and you like clean out all the white stuff inside and you eat that too and and that's going to actually go through and, and, and heal and declog your arteries and what you do is you go for a walk because uh, what happens is these people who have severely clogged arteries they can't walk because if they start pumping their blood a lot they you know there's a blockage and they'll have a heart attack yeah uh, so he said if you you go for a walk and if you start having a heart attack, you just lean over and you cough as hard as you can, like until you stop having a heart attack. And then you drink water and you keep walking. And he's he's healed. That's it. And in, in four to six weeks, you'll uh, clear clear your. Oh, and you got to be on an all vegetarian diet too, because um, Why is that? Uh, animal protein is directly correlated with heart disease and high blood pressure and those kinds of things. Okay. So you go on an all vegetarian diet. You eat grapefruits every morning and you walk. Even if the doctors are telling you that you can't walk, you walk. And, and this is not medical advice, and I am not responsible for anything that you all try with this information. But this man has healed hundreds of people. He's healed um, hundreds of stage four cancers using nothing but this $30, no, $8 um, hydrogen peroxide, uh, food grade hydrogen peroxide. He sells it on his website with the manual of how to cure cancer with it. $8. $8. Um, and it's a five week. Thing that you that do is amazing. Consistently increasing, you basically alkalize your whole body with this hydrogen peroxide and kill everything inside. You can use it for curing, you know, herpes or other things too. Mm. And um, it's so amazing, I almost don't want to believe it. Like because it yeah. sucks because we've been lied to our whole life yeah. about you yeah. know what health looks like. Like yeah. uh, another story that he told was um, these uh, these kids got this like flesh eating bacterial infection on their legs and they had these huge open sores on their legs right and and they actually got it from the hospital where you'll get most of your infections so you know um and so it was these two kids and their neighbor and and these three kids total got these infections the one father of the two called don tolman to help the other father listened to what the doctor said so don tolman came used raw organic honey Put it, packed the wounds with raw organic honey because nothing can grow in honey. So the the bacterial infection healed, you know, and he healed them in just a couple of weeks using nothing what? But, but honey, right? The other kid whose dad didn't listen to Don uh, had his legs amputated. That's what the doctors. That's what was the doctor's recommendation. You got to amputate their legs, and and so one of the kids got his leg amputated. The other two kids healed themselves with honey. Isn't that crazy? And stuff happens like that all the time, all the time. How does it? Because guy... nobody knows this stuff because because yeah. it's not mainstream. It doesn't make anybody money. There's yeah. no money in honey, except <laughs> except if you're a honey farmer, right? But it's like I'm sure that amputation, leg surgery, and follow up probably costs you know two hundred thousand dollars a head. Yeah. Right. You know. Oh, huh. Whereas the organic honey probably only costs like twenty five dollars. Mm. So where did, did uh, this guy learn it? Yeah. Uh, Don Tolman, uh, he, he's crazy, man. He's, he's a, a guy out of Utah. Um, grew up with no, like hardly any formal education. But he got inspired to go on a quest to figure out how to make uh, like the perfect food, like the superfood of the ancients, which he did eventually find. Um, but his quest led him through like catacombs and, um, you know, like he's been to... 50, 60 different countries. He's been in catacombs. He's cataloged 10,000 different artifacts. He actually worked for this super rich family uh, that every year they just spend a bunch of their money on like artifacts uh-huh. because like they have so much money that they What's just artifacts it, like uh, like ancient old things from different cultures around okay. the world. Okay. Objects, ancient objects. Yeah. And okay. so he's personally cataloged. Yeah, that's his website. He's personally cataloged. Um, thousands of artifacts and he's been all over the world searching through the, the wisdom of the ancients okay and and he knows about I mean it's beyond even just food as medicine I mean this guy knows about how we used to learn and how we used to be taught to learn and how scholars used to learn oh so I've seen this guy literally take uh, fr- from the crowd uh, at the workshop we, we wrote 
uh, 100 words on two different pages, right? And it was numbered one to 50 on one page, uh, 51 to 100 on the other page. And next to each number was a random word like baseball, microphone, you know, food, water, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Random word, right? He took the two pages. He looked at them for about six seconds. He goes, done, hands the pages back. At that point, you could ask him any number. He would tell you the word that's next to it. He could, you could say number 16 through 32. He would go boop, 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 boop. He would tell you exactly what words were. He could go yeah. forwards, backwards, yeah. and he can retain that information for as long as he wants, as long as he chooses to. And, and he learned it all in like six seconds, right? Because he knows how our brains can really learn. And it's like what the ancients used to learn the way. Um, so basically what he said is that in about the year 300, um, this tyrant came in um, and burned the library of Alexandria and like slaughtered all the scholars and implemented uh, academics, which is basically like a form of enslavement. Chant memorization. You know, we get taught to learn the wrong way. You know, the way the example he uses is if you think about it right now, you can walk in your mind's eye, in your imagination, you can walk over, open your fridge, you can see where every ingredient in your fridge is, you can read the labels, you know exactly what's in your fridge. How do you know that stuff? Did you memorize that? Did you sit down with a list and say, okay, in the fridge we have butter, eggs, milk, right? Like you didn't, and then you read it over and over again, like when you're learning vocabulary, right? right? Yeah. No, you didn't do that. You, you learned visually you learn and, and, and our brain processes in these incredible ways so he, he teaches that kind of stuff he teaches food knowledge stuff he, he teaches all this you know, how to heal yourself Wow. last thing I'll say about Don Tolman because he's the man I <laughs> love this guy uh, it's documented they, they, they documented it and did a study on it I think it was some university that documented it uh, he went for 40 days on nothing but water drank a quart of grapefruit juice or grape juice and then ran a marathon and, and that was documented awesome Four days of what Four, 40 days what? With no, 40 days with no food just drinking water uh, and then he ran a marathon after drinking a quart of grape juice how is that possible I mean I know he knows stuff about getting energy from the sun which is something I also do like I look at the sun every day and I've been doing that for about a year and a half and you develop the rods and cones in your eyes okay. and you're able to take in energy from the sun just like plants do, just like your skin does. Huh. You can do it really, really powerfully with your eyes. Um, and you don't look directly at the sun, no? No, you do. What? Yeah. Uh, and, and You're not you, supposed to. That's, that's <laughs> what they say. Yeah. Well, they, that's what they say because it keeps you disempowered. You know, if you knew that you could get lots of energy from the sun and you, you know, you had a, a better connection with, with the energetic being that you truly are. Plus, then you wouldn't buy your sunglasses and your sunscreen and all the things that you should buy. But there are, there, the there could scary. be Again, someone rather, sitting do there own like. Research. Do your own research on this before you try, I guess. Yeah, you know? well, but well, here's, sounds, here's the thing is, is you don't so want to just start looking at the sun in the middle of the day. Uh, yeah. If you're just starting, look at. Uh, the first hour of sunlight and the last hour of sunlight yeah. and start with just 30 seconds huh. and then go up by 10 seconds a day. You have to train. You have to develop the cones and the rods inside your eye to process that information. You know, light is just information. Like think about fiber optics, yeah. right? That's yeah. information traveling through light, right? And so same thing. The sun is, tra is beaming us information energy, right? And so you can process that information with your eyes. Uh, and what I can say is just after about a year and a half of doing doing this pretty consistently is uh, I definitely get energy from the sun, no doubt about it. And uh, my eyes have developed significantly where now when I used to wear sunglasses and stuff, I just, I never have Cause the I'm desire. Because I'm horrible in the sun. I do this Yeah, you and then And then the what time. do you do? You put on sunglasses, right? Yeah. So that makes you worse. Or I just go like this. <laughs> yeah. It's a good face. Your eyes are some muscles. Right, just like anything else. Uh -huh. Don Tolman also teaches about how you can heal from eyeglasses. You don't have to wear eyeglasses just because you have them. Don Tolman is going on the podcast. Yeah, all yeah. the time. If you can get him in, he, Don, he's he's not you. too hard to reach out to. You know, just reach out to him. I and think so. Yeah. You just send you, him this he, clip, this this massive testimony. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, he's the man. He's the man. And and uh, everything I say is uh, stricken from the record as medical advice. Uh, there's too many lawyers in America, so I have to say this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not liable for anything you do with any of this information. 
Uh, we are. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to send a lawsuit, send it to Oslo, Norway, Mor- <laughs> care of Morton Hockey. <laughs> we won't give a shit. So anyway, uh, <laughs> I think the you know what this just shows is the potential for human beings is so much more than what we're using right now. It's so right. much more, and it takes so to such a long period of time before we, uh, we develop knowledge until it's taught in school. It takes such a long time. Like mm-hmm. what we learn in school today is not even, not even relevant. Percent. It's not even relevant. To what <laughs> we, what's the real world? You know, people go through the whole I don't know twenty years of education. No, uh, I don't know about but, that. Yeah, if you're doing like yeah, college or at least, masters at or at least yeah. twelve years. You know, at least twelve years of education, and then, and then they go out of there, and then they have to learn the real stuff. You know, then they go into a, some kind of technology company, and it's, they're way beyond. They have to educate them all over again. Right, and it's not even that they have to learn the real stuff; they have to unlearn the fake unlearn stuff. The oh fake yeah, stuff, yeah. It's just like, that may be the even harder. It's much harder. Oh, I've been unlearning a lot since I dropped school. Oh, yeah. That's that's I feel like the majority of my self development has really just been unlearning. Yeah, like because how I behave now is very similar to how I behaved when I was like six years old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like jump around. I'm like really happy. That's so true. I, I push people, you know, I'm like, you know, when I'm flirting with a girl, I'm like, tag, you're it. And I run away. Yeah. Right. And it's like, uh, who I am right now is definitely most similar to who I was before I got yelled at for being myself every single day in kindergarten and in first grade, like until I shut up pretty much. For yeah. ten years, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Huh? You, you, you tell you dropped out of, uh, col- or you just started your own business right out of college, or yeah, I during no, college. I, I finished. I finished college and got my engineering degree from Rutgers University. Yeah. Um, but I've never worked a day in my life as an engineer ever. I started building my internet businesses uh, in my fourth out of five years in college. Cool. Tell about it. Like, who? What about it? Like, how did you start? Like, yeah. um, my parents. My parents bought this like make money online course uh, that was called the Nitro Blueprint Marketing Method. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds, like, sound, yeah. sounds like a marketing like, product. Like they bought it right? off TV, like three hundred dollars, make money online, um, and it was basically this crap course about how to write an ebook and sell it online. Okay. Um, and all it really did for me was it opened my eyes to the possibility. Yeah. You know, this was like two thousand eight, so. I feel like people were even less aware back then that you could make money online. I think now a lot of people know that you can At make money online. At least a lot online. of people I surround myself with, but yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> a lot of people still don't know. They're like, I, I tell them that I'm an online marketer and they're like, oh, is there good money in that? And it's like, I don't know, infinite money? is like, <laughs> like, what does that mean? Like, you know, um, but yeah, so it opened my eyes and me and my buddy at the, at, and my roommate at the time, we became business partners and we, we co-wrote this book. We wrote it, we we're just like, you can sell eBooks online. So we're like, okay, let's write one. So we wrote this book and we wrote it in 10 days. It was called Getting Grades and Getting Laid, the <laughs> X-rated guide to college. I love it. And it was, yeah, it's college. basically like everything you would want, like a college senior, like everything a college freshman would want to learn from a college senior about like how to be the man, like how to, <laughs> how, how to like, how to be the, like the coolest kid on your freshman dorm, like how to get into frat parties, how to do good in your classes without going to them, like yeah. how to like skill your homework and studying for tests in like rapid period of time. Like, so it was like self-development. Are you still, with, like, is it still out there? Um, no, we took it down at some point, but um, getting grades and getting, getting and getting laid, the <laughs> X-rated guy to college. Um, no, what's up? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll see if I can dig it up. No, um, but awesome. so we wrote this like crap sales letter, and we like made a graphic for the book. Like my roommate made it by hand, like this hand drawn <laughs> book. Um, and we stole somebody else's sales letter, like word for word. Like we literally, there's this make money on. There's this like how to make money sales letter yeah. and we like copied it pasted it and everywhere that they were like make money we put get laid <laughs> it's like it's like and you will then make lots of money and you will then get laid or you will then be cool in college right and and we put it up there we actually like we use one technique that we knew for driving traffic and that's like the basics of what we knew and we actually sold like a handful of copies 
at twenty seven dollars. We sold like five or six copies. That's awesome. Yeah, and, and uh, sixteen on the first dollars. Yeah, first dollars oh, online. Yeah. It was like online first dollars online. It's now like no, it's possible. I'm never going back. I'm never going back. Right. Yeah, and that that started just a, a never ending desire to just create freedom to create really. Yeah. You know, it just when you make when you have your own business or when you work at something you love. It's not work. It's creation. Yeah. yeah. It's an expression of who you are. Right. And it's so like, true. that, that's why I keep trying to reprogram the word work. You know, I, I got to do some work. I, d- like, I got to do some creating. I, I got to create. Okay. Great. You know? Yeah. Yeah. That's much more powerful. I have to express myself you, in my yeah. email box for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to express my Gmail account. <laughs> Uh, and the funny thing is that you don't have to and you know, at some point you don't have to you right just, you keep doing it you want to i have to work is such a it doesn't have to, oh it's so like, disempowering when you say that i have to work uh, it's like i'm trapped to do something i don't like you know it's uh, yeah. it's a weird thing to say really. yeah weird that's true say. i've got to well, you know you don't you don't got to you can go into the wild have to do shit, so yeah. what happened after the get laid or the get the uh, cool what's the, the uh, get grades and get laid i basically went on like a bender of learning you know just trying lots of little affiliate marketing things and little techniques and little like online marketing tactics and then uh, i came full circle and i eventually you know after trying a lot of different little things that weren't working but learning a lot in the process yeah i, f- I came full circle and i wrote my own book yeah. called uh, how to meet attract and seduce the women you desire yeah and then i made that pen name uh kurt spelling and yeah. i launched that whole brand yeah and uh you know it took about three iterations of that website to create a sales letter that was working and a f- sales funnel that was working three iterations what do you mean like I put out the site and it looked one way and I couldn't sell a copy. Okay. You know, and then I put it all so out tested. another way. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. And um, then I also built an online, my, my, my biggest success online so far was I built an online e-commerce store Okay. where uh, we were selling high priced water filtration devices. Oh, filter water. Yeah, but okay. they make alkaline water. They're called water ionizers. Okay. Um, and, and me and a buddy built a website and... Uh, that was our biggest success in 2010. We did a million dollars in gross revenue. Wow! And it was like, yeah. And it was just like that's what how I moved to Cali, and I was like financially free for like two and a half years off that website and that venture. Yeah. And I just so you had a warehouse then. Uh, drop ship. Drop everything. ship. Ooh, so we literally nice. never we, we never see. touched only traffic then. Oh yeah, all we were doing was driving traffic to a website that could actually sell people the item and the make things. them feel confident that they weren't getting scammed. Yeah. You know, and then the order came in to us. We'd send it out to the to the the warehouse. Um, they would charge us for the unit, and we keep the difference between retail and wholesale. Yeah, you know, and was so a good margin or oh, pretty solid margin. You know, anywhere from um, basically as we built up more of an overhead, more of a company, and we had to do less of the work, our margin went down. Obviously, okay, you know, but you're still we looking still at like twenty five percent margin. Nice, you know, and like the first time. The first time we sold one, right? Like at that point, like I was the customer service agent, right? So I'm on the phone, like, hello, like, welcome to the, you know, saying <laughs> the com- you know, oh, this unit is good for this reason. And like talking them through all the units and, um, t- whoa, taking the credit card order and all that stuff. And yeah. then, um, I remember taking the first order and it was like this machine that, you know, we make like 800 bucks, like bam in the pocket. Nice. Right. And at the time I was sleeping on a blow up mattress in my mom's office because I no longer had a bedroom. It became my mom's office <laughs> while I was at college. Yeah. And I was I was preparing to go out to California at the end of the summer. And it was like July, you know? And, and we find, we I just had this faith that we were going to make it. make it work in time to fully support ourselves, full living online before moving to California. And in July, we made our first sale and I was just like, just like, no! Just like, <laughs> just like jumped out of the old, finished taking the order, thank you so much. You know, bye. Put the headphones down. Yeah! <laughs> like running around the room in a circle. My dog's running around in a circle, like chasing me and barking. Everyone's screaming, right? And it's like, boom, like 800 bucks in the bank right there, right? Off that one thing. Then yeah. I went to sleep and I woke up and I'm like, you know, just get, getting out of my slumber. I'm all groggy. I put, pick up my smartphone, my iPhone, check my email. Boom two more sales while I was sleeping, we had made like another $1,800 in nice. cash. And I was just like, <laughs> oh boy, like just like 
eight in the morning screaming in my yep. house, you know? And I know the feeling. That, that was, yeah, and I was just living like Such that, you know? Feeling. Then we're driving out to California, like, with, you know, three guys in a car and everything that we're bringing with us, all of our belongings in the car with us. And I'm, like, sitting in the back seat, like, taking orders on my phone, like, nice. writing down credit cards and, like, hustling like and boom, hustling 500 more and hustling. dollars. Yeah, hustling, dude. And uh, that was that was fun, man. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Now, I look forward to um, to creating something even bigger than that with Man Evolution. Yeah, and the cool thing is that when you, like, what you're going to do now or what you're doing now is that when people buy, you know that you're not only okay clean water is a pretty solid product and oh, you're it, helping people it was right? helping people solve major medical problems it's okay. really really awesome but oh, cool. not my ultimate gift not my so ultimate you, purpose for being here right so it's going to be even better when you do the when every sa- when every sale is a tra- you know is a transformation of somebody's entire lifestyle yep and, and oh my towards god massive success. oh my yeah because that's like that's our experience i mean so kind of Doing the passion immersion thing, yeah, with you know putting guys through a four month program. Like, what is that like when you see them on the other side and like who they've become in four months of working with you and just like, it's like crazy. what's that feeling like? You know, uh, uh, you know, Mats, the guy with the Mohawk. Yeah, I've been like I've been around that guy. His, I feel like I've been around that guy for his entire real life. If you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like I when I he first came into the room, he did like a, another program with me for a long time ago, and 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 I thought like okay, uh, this is a like this guy is a cool guy trapped in a not cool life and not <laughs> cool personality and not, you know what I mean? And and it just was that see, bad, huh? No, I mean it, yeah, I don't know, but the thing is that you see him, you see him now. Like just the way he walks, just the way he approaches people, talk to girls, talk to 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 you guys or or whoever, you know. Yeah. It's just a completely, completely different look on life and presence, energy, mm. uh, confidence, how he talks, his humor. His humor is like. He's you like he's really funny now. Yeah, he's if a funny you know guy. I mean. Yeah, he's a really funny guy. Yeah. Uh, it's Was like he not that way so to begin with. Not no. <laughs> <laughs> On record. That's awesome. But now yeah, you know, and he's become like a really good friend and a, and a guy I want to hang around. Yeah. It's like the it's transformation so- is ridiculous, and it's all about him actually being himself. You right, know? and that's all it is for everybody. So really. much, yeah. yeah, so much more about stripping away the layers, you know, than it is about us actually adding something. Because yeah. the core of him is just awesome, you know. Right. Same I with Navid. Someone, yeah, I was just about to mention Navid too. You know, yeah. this guy was doing not a positive lifestyle at all when he came oh. here. He looked fuck up, fucked up. He acted, re- you know. Yeah, like a kid, like off. a kid, un- immature kid with not no responsibility. Yeah. Uh-huh. All this kind of stuff and. And then you know it's 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 not like because when you're with them for four months it's like, like a gradual change it's not like all of a sudden they're oh now he's fucking awesome it's right. a gradual change so sometimes you don't notice like the next day is different but maybe but then sometimes you just have those moments when you real when you just notice the insane difference from when you when you first met them yeah so i remember um Navid, for example you know he was he came in there and he's, he's he had a bad relationship with you know with uh, I can talk about this because it's Navid. So he he was negative and he was focusing on really small things in life and he was he was he didn't feel like he was was something. And then I realized once he was sitting in a meeting uh, with us and he was working with us now, you know. And he was sitting there and we were coming up with some like we were me and Morton were talking small and then he was like raising the bar, raising the standards yeah. for how we were thinking and what we were focusing on. Yeah. Nice. And that was like. What the fuck happened with this guy? <laughs> what the fuck is this? What are you talking about? You know, and he's just changed so much in a good way. Yeah, in su- such a good way. Yeah. yeah. And then you know, the next week he's on a, you know, on a holiday with his girlfriend. You know, which was it's incredible. His dream girl. You know. And yeah. Traveling. He's hanging with his dream girl. With us, you know, it's yeah. Yeah, he's he's stuff. totally in, and it's it's a different 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 completely different person he used to be in his basement every day doing or nothing. Vegard, Vegard or 
great. I can talk about all of my students, man. Just, just, <laughs> I can talk about them forever. It's amazing. Have, have you guys ever had someone go through your four month program and not come out the other side, transformed? Um, had a few people who who died. I was who so died? Like they just. <laughs> <laughs> There's been some challenges. Yeah. Like like obviously they they've changed, you yeah. know, but like. Well, there's a there's here's the thing with a with a four month program, like I, me and Knut can't really change anyone. Right, they have to change themselves. So yeah, so sure. we, like, we have been doing this for three times together, and then three other times like as co coaches. Mm-hmm. And there's what we have learned is that we need to set the expectations in the right way, and not only set it in the right way, but repeat it repeat it repeat 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 that their journey and their growth and their development is in their hands you know because if you get students that uh are waiting for others or still waiting for others you know to 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 lift them through the door it'll never happen and they will be very disappointed you know and not only will they get disappointed because they had other expectations, but we get disappointed and they don't they don't fulfill their potential in a way that they could. So we've had a couple of those experiences, yeah. Yeah, so what you learned from that was just setting the expectation. Setting the expectation. And like also you, screening, you're asking cause screening the students. Screening, screening and qualifying the students hard. So we only, like, let it, this time we only let in eight out of over 30, 30, 30, 30 yeah, 35 know. something interviews. And really? those, yeah, There's and those guys, we screened yeah. and qualified a lot. Like we only, like if you're gonna, if you're gonna be down with us, you need to like really step up, really step up. Like this mm. is, this is the beginning of your life. It's like setting the standard, like really setting the standard, because uh, and also that everything is their responsibility. So the first day in passion immersion, we basically like taken away. <laughs> like kind of like overdoing the and taking away the responsibility and giving it to them because they have to own it right they have to own their own development and sometimes people like if they don't own their development they're like holding themselves back because a lot of people feel that if they're going to grow they're going to do it themselves you know i'm going to do it myself Uh or even if they're not saying i'm going to do it myself a lot of people feel that they want to do it themselves so if you like hanging over their shoulders all the time and not letting them do the work themselves they they can relapse go back relapse into old reality old habits old like small thinking yeah. old reality yeah this is important stuff for me because of you know wanting to do the or yeah, tell about doing it. the, the yeah. true man immersion yep so kick ass yeah. kick ass yeah. so really cool thing that uh morton and canute inspired for me uh everything i've done has been online so far and i've coached you know, thousands of men and I get emails every single day about, you know, people whose lives I've changed, but uh, I've never done anything live and really in person until, until coming here and doing live coaching and speaking at the summit and it's been awesome, you know, and mm-hmm. it's really just showed me um, that that's somewhere I need to play for a little while. I need to just be with people and I need to really, you know, give them my energy and my personal intention and, all of that and so that's been massive for me but mm. out of masterminding with Morton and Canute and and you know sharing my online knowledge with them and then they're sharing what they did with with their immersive programs I'm creating what I'm calling the true man immersion which is going to be a 12 week in person training that I'm going to be doing in San Diego hell yeah where basically you go through my curriculum called the true man academy um, but it's going to be in depth five to six hours workshop every single week where you have essentially this group of guys who you become this band of brothers where it's like you you get access to me and access to them in this new social circle and this whole new life that just gets created over the course of 12 weeks as you just become your best self yep. you know and i'm just i'm stoked man because that is going <laughs> to be the best fucking program yep. that exists in yep. san diego like the guys who are there who are who are ready for it and who yeah. are looking to really own their life and just like be the best. love their life? Yeah, it's gonna oh. be their best opportunity to take it up. Next. Yeah, I don't know of anything like that that exists. No, I've <clears> never <throat> heard of any programs like that. And and I've seen your program and it's solid, solid as fuck. So I haven't gone through it, but we just did the uh, 
the overview and going through the things and what I've seen from you talking uh, at the summit and also to the passion immersion yeah, guys. Yeah. Passion I took notes. Awesome. I took six pages of notes in one hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice, I love you. to be a student again. Like this is a guy who got it together. He, yeah. He's got his shit together. Like this is the real deal. Nice. Yeah, and I told you, like I told you on the bus, the guys calling me like, I did what Noah told me it worked, you know? <laughs> the energy job stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so. Well, it was awesome because. Um, um, you're natural, man. It's going to be great, the things you're going to do in Canada. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you, brother. I'm stoked. Uh, but I was telling Morton on the way here, um, you know how I talked about uh, approach anxiety with the one student who, and more importantly, the res technique sure. for releasing emotional charges. Yeah. Um, and as I was walking to yoga the other day, I'm walking through the central station area and he's just standing, like talking with these two cute girls. And I just like, you know, and it was right after I helped him through his fears about like doing that, yeah. you know, so I just like saw it immediately <laughs> in action and I was just like, Oh my God. So as I walked by him, I'm just like slapping him on the shoulder, like, Hey man, I can go to yoga, but see you. And just like, you know, just like hyping him up. Like he's super popular super kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Isn't it cool to see that like right away? To yeah. See that feedback. Yeah. It's a whole different thing. It's you're going to see that a lot with the yeah. guys you're working with. Oh, see, I know. Like see it live. I'm going to see, uh, uh that's some one of the best things that I love to do is going out with guys on the street. So yeah. See like, the results right there. Yeah. Oh my god! Like they, we did this exercise. They're gonna share their shame, kind of. They share their deepest secret, dark secret, uh -huh. uh, and like, and also uh, do some exercises, becoming comfortable with it and accepting it and loving it and sharing it with more people. So after that, they go out on the street, telling it to, to strangers. strangers. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, oh, that. Dude, that's that's so awesome when you see someone sharing their dog. Like one guy called me, like I told him, like uh, because he we, he had an exercise telling the your secret to people, uh -huh. and they did. And then afterwards, he went out like talking to girls. So uh, he talked with some girls, and they went on like an instant date. Him and two girls yeah. went and grabbed a car for you. And then he called me afterwards, like I was on this amazing day. Not only that, but I told them my secret, and they loved it. And they told they told their secrets, and all of a sudden he was on this deep <laughs> conversation. And he was so hyped up. You know? Imagine, right? Imagine. Yeah. yeah well, that's like people think they have to like cover it up. I just got a mail from someone who said like. Uh, I don't remember, but uh, she wrote something like, uh, and I don't, and it, and it's bet her belief was that it is best to cover those things sometimes. And I thought to myself, no, not at never. all, never, yeah. never, <laughs> never, never hold that mask up and cover it up. Like things like that happens when you actually open up. Things like going on a date with two beautiful girls and having them share their secrets maybe and connecting on a deep shared. level. You know, maybe stuff they never dare to share with others. Yeah, just yeah. because they heard him do it, they yeah. they want to do it as well. Yeah. He created the space for it, you yeah. know, like yeah. for for truth. Yeah, right. And that's that's what happens when you're an authentic man yeah. is that you create a space for authenticity to exist. And it's like, where else in the world does that space exist? No. Right, like media programs you to be critical, um, and and you know your girlfriends are programmed by that same media, so they're critical. You know, and so everyone girls, on television is perfect. Know, everybody on television <laughs> looks perfect. Everybody in the magazines looks perfect. Everybody on the billboards looks perfect. Mm -hmm. Right, and so these girls are walking around with just like no space for authenticity in the workplace. Mm -hmm. You got to put up your mask. You got to wear your little business pants suit thing yeah. and and act like a good busy bee. Yeah. Right, and then it's like, and then you're out and. You're at the clubs. Where's the authenticity in a club, right? It's all show, yeah. right? So it's like, where is realness happening mm. in our world? And it's like, it's happening when you're around a guy who's fucking real. And it's yep. so special when that happens, you know, it's because it's so, it's so rare. It's also so special. You know, what's funny and what's really interesting is that people, when, when people are used to always wearing their mask, then naturally you, other people around you will wear a mask as well. Right, yeah. right. they reflect they it right back at you. Exactly. And what's interesting is that then people start developing these beliefs that they are this kind of special snowflake. Like, I, I'm the only one who has insecurities. I'm the only one who isn't perfect. Because right. everybody else seems like they're perfect. Because yeah. everybody's putting out their best self on Facebook and you know everywhere they can show themselves. They're always as perfect as they can prove themselves you know to be yeah. Yeah. and so everybody sits there with their insecurities or with their flaws and thinks that oh it's just me 
and mm-hmm. I will not show this to others. Yeah, that's, one of the that's most. Why uh, also, yeah, that will stand out. That's also why we like uh, during the first time we share our shame and our secret. We do it as well. We we yeah. do it first. Like we share our thing and it, just to help them show that. Well, it's not like we're this like guru. Yeah, oh, exactly. Guru. <laughs> Exactly. Save me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we you know, you know, cut of, that off. Kind of. it's, yeah. You know, no. yeah. it doesn't help anybody. No, to, no to put yourself on some untouchable pedestal. Yeah. pedestal. No, yeah. I used to do that. I used to do that when I when I was starting coaching. I used to do that because I thought that to be a coach or to be a mentor for someone, I needed to be perfect. Yeah. I needed to fit into this role or these expectations that these students had for me right yeah so if i had weaknesses or showed weaknesses that was bad because then i would lose trust or face among my students you know right all this kind of stuff so it was really weird because at first you have this experience of becoming transparent right yeah. so you have your own evolution yeah. Yeah. but then as you start to be a mentor you start to take up on a new mask or a new role <laughs> it's really funny how that works and you see yeah. so many other coaches who do that yeah. like i'm around them and, I, and it's like they're flawless there's nothing there and i know that's not the truth like guys yeah. saying there's nothing wrong with me like, yeah. All like, right. There's so something wrong with me. So I guess you're dead, <laughs> then, right? What? If, if the purpose here is to evolve, and there's nothing yeah. left to evolve, then I guess you're dead, right? Yeah. yeah. Nothing left to learn. Huh? And that's yeah. also like an illusion. Good point. Like in self-development. If if you do self-development, then there's something wrong with you. That's not the case, man. That's not the case. No. Doesn't have to be. There's something wrong with your. You have to be some kind of special kid you know, no it's just you're to. going for it exactly i'm you going for everything levels. that life has to new offer minds. me and then some yeah yeah you know whatever that what if it's is some kind of deeper consciousness if it's just you know using your time better anything you know and you can be as perfect as you want i don't care there's always something you can expand on or grow yeah. on or evolve in something you know yeah. Yeah, taking uh taking a trip up into mount shasta and, and really cutting like all the all the cords of my normal lifestyle yeah i had this massive amount of resistance and this massive transformation that occurred for me and one of the best things you know that i ever did as far as communicating with my tribe and my people is i shared all my bullshit on facebook i was like i woke up today feeling like shit you know and everybody and and, and, (laughs) and, yeah and obviously i had you know some empowering messages with it too is like you know and I've worked, you know, I've worked in it, I've dove into it, and, and I'm seeing uh, this pattern in myself. And it's, it's, you know, it's tough and it's difficult, but I'm still going. Yeah. Right. And it's like that transparency, like sharing the the realness of yeah. of who I am, not this perfect multi million internet marketing guru of dating awesomeness confidence guy, but like I'm a real person, and, yeah. and my shit comes up too. Yeah. Right. And sharing that, like everybody really responded. You know, hmm. like. Nobody wants to, to follow some flawless being. No. So you just feel like shit because it's like, why am I not perfect? Because you compare, yeah. Yeah, you can't, and you can't be perfect. You know? So. This is like, uh, we have this core confidence workshop, yeah. and uh, uh, there was, I don't know, 25 best people workshop. there. Yeah. Best two, that was awesome. Best two days I've seen people. It's like a very, this is yeah. like what we try to do there is take passion immersion four months and put it into a weekend. Essential oh my God. Yeah, it's you know, wicked. So wicked. Put them in there. It's and so it's much crazy. action taken. Yeah, uh, so we did that, and and we talked about all this, all what we just talked about, and what what happened is there was one guy who said like, well, what about my Facebook friends and stuff, you know? So you know that's that's basically a sign that he has to do that exactly on Facebook, right? Right. So so. We helped him take that, uh, or he who, he took that uh, a choice to to write on Facebook like, "Hey guys, I was at a, this confidence workshop. I've been struggling with low confidence for a long time, and da 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 da. Just completely honest. And I hope for those of you who 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 appreciate this and and want to be with me on my journey. Thank you. I love you. For those of you who don't." fuck off you know, <laughs> know yeah. message and uh and you know you could see guys getting like guys like 50 to 100 likes and 50 uh comments you know guys like, cool yeah oh, like go for awesome. it and then what happened is that other students saw that and they it became like a wave of like 10 people doing the same stuff 
uh, on their Facebook status and same so much happens. support, so, so much support. support. And then yeah. there was maybe one guy with like, ugh, ugh, yeah. sucks. Gay, and then, and then, and or whatever, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. It just looked like a fool to everybody. Yeah, okay, whatever. Right. Awesome, dude, you know. Yeah. But then what happened was, was that I started getting, like a couple of weeks after, I started getting messages from these students. And they told me they like, like old friends that they hadn't spoken to yeah. in years. And I told you this before also, like people who, people didn't like them, started to contact them again and saying, hey, dude, I didn't know, I didn't know you. And because they didn't know you, they all knew the mask. Mm. Right. And so they started to connect with people who otherwise would, like everybody, would, everybody around them was putting a mask on, right? So once this one guy unmasked himself on Facebook, then everybody else felt like, ah, oh, this guy I can be real with. Yeah. It's a massive transformation. Right. So they so got new friends start showing up authentic in your life and stops uh, putting on their yeah. mask for you. Yeah. Freedom. It's beautiful. It's total freedom. Because now they can start to, to do the, um, their self-development, take action on stuff that's maybe embarrassing, own up to it, like owning their insecurities instead of running away from them. Mm. And you know the progress that these guys can have in, in a short period of time is amazing because they no longer have to look over their back and see you know like did, did they believe me yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. did everyone right? buy that did everyone buy that <laughs> or, or did anyone see that you know it, I, I have to succeed with this because if not I will look bad yeah you know, all this kind of stuff just goes out the window when you're owning up to it and you're, or knows is anyone going to bust me for who I really, who am? really am yeah Yeah. that's a big one yeah that's huge especially when people are you know Especially when you're making a social circle, yeah. like yeah. how can you make a supportive social circle if it's made out of in, out of authenticity? Yeah, you know. But but we get those patterns from like school and stuff, right? Like sure. that's the cool group. Like sure. I gotta, I want to fit in with them. Otherwise, I'll be made fun of, right? So let me put on the mask that gets me in with that group or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I used to be an expert. Expert at the mask. Yeah. Yeah. For a long time. What's funny though, it, what's also is, 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 is um, that when you're in this, when you're in school, for example, like me, I grew up in a school that's, you know, there's the whole community, the whole island I lived on was 7,000 people. Because uh-huh. you can imagine the school is kind of small. Right. What happens is that you grow up there and you start to form this illusion that the, the, the maybe, I don't know, the 300 other kids on your age, that's the world. You know, these people, these people's opinion really matter. Yeah. And there's 6 billion people in the world. So right. literally you can go anywhere and there's there's millions of people no matter what you're into or what your personality is like there's people just like you you know yeah. there's, there's people watching this podcast right now and they're they maybe around them they're, they're surrounded by people who don't think the same thing who would look weird on them if they talked about the things that we talk about here <laughs> aliens you know, aliens crystals. motherfucking aliens <laughs> and shit you know, weird you know, conspiracy theories <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, of course, you know. But then they listen to this, and they're part of. Then they realize, like, oh, dude, there's more people who you know think like me, or yeah. you know, it's yep, amazing, it's incredible. Yeah, amazing you gotta stuff. Be, you gotta be real with it, and, and you gotta and you gotta have no um, no qualms about losing or changing friends. Hmm. You know, a lot of people think like yeah. friends. Friends means I'm friends with them for life, but. Yeah. Uh, what I really see is that friends kind of come and go based on your evolution and where you're at. Yeah. You know, like it's okay. It's okay if some people aren't your friends who used to be your friends. They were your friends then, yeah. and, and they're not not your friends now. They're just not so much in your life. It's a new chapter, and you can appreciate that you had a friend like that one time, right? Yeah, yeah. when you were like that too. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, because you know? people evolve. Yeah. People needs to evolve, and if you're expecting that, you need to have this that you need to have the same friends all your life and yeah. you're sort of expecting that people aren't evolving. Yeah, then you're, you're, basi- then you're basically anchored to them, yeah. you know, because you become the people that's, that you're around. That's the thing. So yeah. uh, if, if you're someone who's self-developing watching this podcast and you find that your friends aren't, you should really look for some new friends. They're yeah. a ball and chain, you know, and they're going to slow you down and they're going to hinder you and they're going to make you second guess yourself and they're going to make you feel weird or uncomfortable. Um, they're going to criticize you and all those things and, they don't do it intentionally to stop you. They do it out of their own insecurities, their own yeah. discomfort. Like, look how happy that person is getting. Like, uh, hey, man, you're smoking that dope, right? And it's like, you know, they don't say that. They say some kind of criticism or whatever. Yeah. They don't realize that they're doing it mm. out of their own discomfort. Like, mm. sure, yeah. You know? But 
it's just bottom line. You become the five people you spend the most time with. Mm. So I'm happy that pretty soon I'm going to be off this podcast in the morning. Can you, cause I need to get the fuck out of here. Fuck <laughs> 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 you. Yeah. Uh, no, good people to be around supporting. You too, man. Yeah. Supporting Learn a lot growth. from you. Yeah. yeah. I'm glad you came here because it was kind of a, uh, in a special way. Because your the one way ticket, yeah, the last minute decisions. No, but just just like me, uh, deciding on inviting you here. Right. Um, yeah. From the interview we did. Yeah. And, and you know, it started with your JV or affiliate manager contacting me, and I usually say no to them because usually, like, this is like usually uh, the uh, a lot of companies within the seduction community are crap. Like, yeah, I can they, say they, that. Like, they have crap products. Yeah. So I usually like. There's so many, and so I usually say no to promote any of them, or let them promote me because I don't want to associate with them at all. But like your friend uh, William contacted yeah. me, and like, and I and I did some research on your stuff, and it was like, oh, this is pretty solid. Oh, that's know? pretty good. Pretty yeah. good. <laughs> 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 and uh, and then uh, yeah, we did the interview, and I felt like yeah, you got your shit together. So. Yeah. I want to invite you and walk in the talk, walking in the walk. Yeah, it's uh, you can feel that on people. Yep. Yeah, it doesn't matter what they say, you can sort of you, you feel that walk in the talk. Yeah, because yeah. you can feel the mask. Yeah, yeah. Or you can feel no mask. Yeah, yeah. I think we are about to end this podcast. I think that's a good ending. How for how long have we yeah. gone? No idea. Okay, anyways, I want to say yeah. thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, it's been a very course. uh. Like you set the standard earlier, you set the intention earlier. Yeah. The segment I think, intention. I think we met those intentions. I what think so think? too. What are the people at home? Hardcore. Think? Type in a Canute. Send him sexy messages. Yeah. <laughs> Noah, there's something Tom's happening. Noah, you are a ginger beauty. <laughs> <laughs> someone really typed that in. <laughs> uh, thank you, I think. What's oh, yeah. That? Can I repeat the intention so you took it in the beginning? Uh, it, was, it was about you know sharing authentically, sharing wholly, bringing in the best information possible, enjoying it, having fun, being authentic, all those kinds of things. And uh, I think we, I think we sat. Yes, I told you about it uh, when you came here. I told yeah. you like this. Yeah, I told you about the segment thing. So yeah, you can you can talk more about it. But anyways, guys, thank yeah. you so much. We love that you're listening. We love you and we appreciate it. And we're so grateful that you want to listen to us three now four dorks sitting here talking nonsense but it's not <laughs> nonsense um and also i want to say nonsense? that me and knut uh we are looking for um we are looking for some guys uh you know uh, to to join our team we need some guys who have uh, different kind of skills but uh and one of them being uh, like a filmmaker Right. Definitely, definitely. So we're in the search of a, a great filmmaker. If you know anyone or you're interested in yourself, uh, write to us. Other than that, click the like button, write some comments, share this, please. And let's spread this community of uh, being more conscious yeah. and developing ourselves. Thank you so much, man. You're awesome. You too, brother. <laughs> Thanks, guys. See you. See you.